All right, uh, greetings family. This is Bomani Tamba and welcome to our March 20th, 2022 conference call for our Africa tour schedules going to six different countries. And that is Senegal, the Gambia, Liberia, South Africa, Ghana, and Tanzania. So we're gonna go through the schedule based on what I sent uh, via email in our newsletters that you just sent. And we're gonna also go to the website and go to uh, Facebook and YouTube. And that uh, will cover all of the documentation and also open things up to where we can literally go to all of the uh, details in this, answer any questions. So this is March. So this is uh, my 18th year anniversary traveling to the African continent. I started traveling March of 2004 to Senegal. And then a month later, went to my famous uh, Egypt journey that I've uploaded uh, about two months ago uh, to show people that we're still in the same mission and vision as far as this continuing the work, as far as connecting our people to the African continent for roots, culture, business, investment, and other wonderful things. So the news that I'm gonna do a share and then we're just gonna go through it. I have all of the uh, schedules on there and the links uh, for the social pages and things like that. All right, and I'm hoping everybody can see this real good. All right, so that is uh, literally our last journey, a beautiful group picture there in Ghana on our wonderful December 24th, 2021 to January 5th, 2022 journey. And that was my 20th journey to Ghana. And that was this wonderful, the, the hardship about that journey was the, the Ghana COVID-19 mandate. So unfortunately that mandate um, still requires for anyone looking to travel to Ghana to show a COVID-19 vaccination card. So I have no idea if that mandate is still gonna be in place. They do have a quarantine option, but that quarantine option is seven days. So that's not even something that most of us can deal with and things like that. So we're putting the pressure as much as possible on because it has caused a drop in tourism and you have complaints from so many different tour guides because they're feeling it more than anyone else because they're used to just having a whole lot of groups throughout the entire year. So the best thing I can do at this very moment is to travel with the people that are prepared to travel to Ghana in May and December and for everyone else the best thing I can recommend uh, is um, literally just give it some time or you can travel to all the other countries that we're traveling to on the schedule. Uh, Tanzania, Senegal, Gambia, Liberia, and South Africa. And for those who are looking for investments outside of Ghana, the only other country that we really have that going on is Liberia, which I'm gonna be talking more about because I've been, over the last few years, a group of people that's connected to Liberia have been trying to recruit me for a long time. And I tell them that's, you know, that's, they have to just give me time for me to process and study the history and do certain things. So I started connecting with my brother, Kala Genesis, who is an expert on Liberia and has great connections. So we're gonna be able to offer some more options. And then I already got my good brothers uh, doing uh, journeys to Sierra Leone. So we're just trying to level the playing field to where one or two countries don't feel like they have it, you know, they have a gold mine to where they can just make any kind of adjustments because the African diaspora uh, represent the connection that the African continent needs to fulfill a whole of a people to where we as a people can come together and literally uh, compete against the likes of all the other people that are you know, basically taking advantage of the opportunities in Africa. I would say AKA our opportunities, but you know how it goes. If we as a people from the diaspora are not coming to the African continent, then those opportunities uh, get taken away uh, or other people take advantage of those opportunities. So by us con connecting together, uh, we are able to compete at a higher level uh, because right now in countries like Ghana, what you have is uh, groups of um, from Lebanese, Chinese, Indians, and others literally just buying up land everywhere and literally just doing a lot of development and building. Uh, so 
trying to get our people just minds open and everything. So it's been a real challenge in our journey, but I realized that the more we can put in place in the different countries, the better it will be as far as people looking at the opportunity. So over the last 18 years, I've just filled the network, the internet with just all kinds of different videos of our travels, our tours, our investment, networking, and things like that. And this flood the, the market as far as Instagram and Facebook with just wonderful pictures of all these beautiful black people from the diaspora that's connecting to the roots and culture. So I just wanted to thank everybody for all this support and energy. Uh, we have taken over 500 people plus uh, across the African continent. And then I've been responsible for taking another few hundred people that you know usually go on their own when we just explain and set things up for them. Now, the bad story that I have is I was working on a, a couple or a family of four for a long time uh, to get them connected to Ghana. And part of what they were looking to do was to you know, get land with us and do certain business. But unfortunately, since um, they were denied boarding um, on flights to go to Ghana because they didn't have vaccination card, they turned around and moved to another country, the Gambia, now, which is fine because the Gambia is uh, one of our network countries that we're working with. But I'm just sharing with people that these are the situations that countries like Ghana is gonna hurt themselves when they decide that they feel like they can just do these kind of things. We've been able to build a beautiful energy. And in 2019, I don't know what happened. I guess uh, I guess people just got, their eyes got red and greedy and realized that uh, we're coming in bulks. And so some of the laws and things have been changed and adjusted as far as residency and things like that. So that's what I mean by I'm working with many other countries to this level of playing field. Now, Ghana is where we have, you know, where we have our investments and things going, and you know that won't change. But uh, what you want to do is create more options. So that's all that did. It just made us stronger to where we just, you know, we're just creating a bunch of different options. So stay tuned for all of those things. And let me uh, scroll down some more. You'll see our wonderful Tanzania journey of a lifetime, uh, November 19th to the 29th of last year. So those are our two iconic uh, journeys. And right now I have this lot of uh, videos and pictures up uh, just to share people that regardless of whatever was going on in the world, we still decided to continue on by following whatever protocols was there, which is usually you have to have your, your PCR test uh, within uh, 72 hours before you get on the flight. And then if you do have to take um, a rapid test there in countries like Tanzania, it's uh, $10. And unfortunately countries like Ghana is $150. So that's one of those things where people get discouraged and it throws people off. So we're trying our best and I'm working with as many people as possible there in Ghana uh, and getting them to understand that they must fight for their rights to, to you know, keep us coming to the, uh, the continent and keep us coming to countries like Ghana. And if the government and whoever is in place that's make these things a little bit difficult, they're gonna lose out on people. So we're gonna keep it moving and things like that. And, you know, but definitely was one of us lay that out. Another journey that we had, uh, Senegal and Gambia Roots and Culture Tour, uh, last year was wonderful. I was looking to do it again uh, this year in April, but unfortunately, you have a situation where you have a few people commit to the journey, and then you have a lot of people who say that they want to come to the journey, and then it comes up to two months. And when it comes that close, if you don't only have a few people, you have to make you know certain adjustments. Number one, you can send the people who want to go because I have staff of people in all countries, or you can you know basically reschedule. So in this case, we just had to reschedule for April 2023. 20, so that schedule is up live, and we're just gonna start a lot earlier and get people committed. So I'm always telling anyone if you're, you're interested, just uh, make a commitment because we have to make a commitment also. Because uh, it's one of those things where you have a few different business going and you're going with the flow of what business work. So the priority business of my life is Africa. If we have a bunch of people want to go to Africa, I'm fine with doing it. I will always just be available to make that move. Uh, and if not, then you know, we're back here doing technology and business services or back uh, working on aircraft, you know? And hopefully, you know, hopefully I don't get a call and say, hey, you know, we need you to train some new technicians because there's a, there's a war going on. And, you know, and hopefully I don't say that, well, it's my duty. You guys trained me well, I'm, I'm off, but that's not happening. My commitment is to Africa and I'm working every day to just reach out to more people by phone calls, texts, and just do a lot more networking and let people know that we have to keep the bridge and the connection 
to the African continent going. And it's been straight 18 years and it's proud to just be able to this, uh, you know, be committed to that uh, movement because it's something that's really needed. Uh, and unfortunately, you know, we have a lot of people talk about black power and African nation building and all those wonderful things, but it never so much translate to wanting to do these things in Africa and things that, and I do understand that, you know, some people feel certain connections to America, but at the same time too, uh, we have to think about the future of our planet, the future of our people. And we have to think about the final or the last frontier, which is the African continent. That's where you have all of the things that you need. And that's the continent that we can actually you know, build what we need to build because you have an abundance of land. Uh, forget about trying to do anything in Asia, Europe, or any other places. And you're limited in America. Like, I can't come here to this county and say, I'm gonna get 50 acres and I'm gonna build you know, black power community and the, this person not allowed or these people not allowed and things like that. Uh, I'm gonna have a whole lot of trouble on my hand, but you know, it's something that we could do in Ghana because we're building something for our, you know, for us as a people. And ultimately we're building a future for our children. The ones that we're bringing are the ones that we have here and definitely our children on the African continent who I feel deserve better, who deserve great opportunities that we can all put our energy together and do. Uh, so instead of this, uh, leaving the burden of the future on our people on the African continent, we decided to commit ourselves to bring people so we can all work together. So I've, I've loved that connection and I'm just dedicated to keep on working on it. So on the news that you'll see all these uh, wonderful group uh, photos and it's a little bit different and a little awkward because you know, I remember back to back uh, every six months we're taking 30 to 40 people to Africa. Uh, on a regular basis. So when you look at the group pages or the group pictures on the website, you know, you see these big groups. And honestly, I was getting those groups without even trying very hard. I was just really just doing basic marketing and basic work. And now I'm doing 10 times as much and these are the outcome. So it's the time that we're living in and things that I've talked to many people today and they're still, you know, they're still worried about this COVID-19 uh, protocol. So I tell them ever since that, uh, the the world has opened back up to where you can travel. Uh, what we have done is just follow these protocols. And me and my little boy have been going on all of these journeys and we have been fine traveling, moving around and we've been in the best health and things. Uh, and I can't say we haven't had any issues with any, you know, anything to where we've been sick or anything. So we're just trying our best to just show people that, you know, if we can do it and we can make these moves, everyone else can make these moves. The only thing I'm telling them is that just follow our protocols and follow what we have set up. Because the most hurtful thing is when you have game plans for the people that are traveling with you based on all your experience. And then someone sees videos on YouTube by some of these rookies on YouTube who are only on YouTube to just basically get donations and get views. And they start telling them about, about certain things about, you know, about how it works to get there and things like that. And I was like, you guys are not experts on getting people in and out of country and prepared. But unfortunately, I have to blame the people who listen to them because we give strict details and we make uh, ourselves available literally all the time to go through anything. And if anyone have any questions, I'm always telling them that regardless if they think I'm busy or not, you can call me. And if you know you feel like I'm tired of busy, just send me a message, say, hey, Bomani, are you open or available to talk for a few minutes or so on? And I'm always gonna say yes. Now, if I'm doing something, I'm gonna say, just give me a few minutes or, or a certain time and I can connect back with you. And that's the purpose of having this office here that uh, we've been building uh, since uh, day one. So right now what we're telling everyone is for anyone that's interested in any of these journeys, uh, once you read through the information on our website, just secure a deposit and we're just gonna look at those numbers and we're gonna make it work. And then it gives us enough time to plan preparation for all of these journeys because it's not something that you can really do in one month. It's something that you have to this, you know, you have to organize ahead of time, number one, all the people that you're dealing with in whatever country, uh, you have to be clear with them about the schedule so they can prepare their life because you know, all of us are entrepreneurs that do different business. So we can't come at them and say, uh, we're ready to go and it's a month. You know, they may have other groups or other plans. So that's why all this stuff has to be worked out ahead of time to where you make sure that the people that you have on the ground are taken care of with their deposit and you just kind of pace yourself with them. So once you click on that link, those are the options for deposits. Now this is the incredible schedule. 
So the next journey we have is uh, Ghana Repatriation Investment Tour, May 24th to June 5th, 2022. Now, I literally do not know if uh, Ghana is going to change the mandate next month or so on, but I'm on standby, honestly, because that will open it up for some people that are on standby to travel. Uh, and after that, uh, Tanzania Roots and Culture Tour, November 17th to the 28th, 2022. So that's our featured, featured journey. And... And this is my famous uh, Tanzania uh, jersey, which I have more photos in this one uh, than other ones. And this was uh, to, de to deliberately start promoting another country, but Tanzania worked out with us because in 2020, we weren't able to go to South Africa. So the best country that worked out that had you know, safaris or national park and some of the similar things uh, was Tanzania. And Tanzania ended up working out much better, especially just being on Zanzibar Island, uh, whether we doing the uh, the, the, the sunset cruise or, you know, or this, this being able to just be out there and just enjoying the beaches and just enjoying the jet ski and just eating tropical food. And then all of the historical places uh, we've been able to go. So I have all those things documented on YouTube as far as videos and I have those things set so everyone can kind of see what we do on these journeys. So I'm going to be showing everyone the playlist for YouTube and also the uh, playlist for all of the pictures on uh, Facebook. And we're gonna be closing out on our Ghana Repatriation Investment Tour, December 24th to January 5th. And that will be the 22nd uh, journey of a lifetime that we've done in Ghana. So I mean, we'll put some serious work in Ghana and everything. And that's why I'm just trying to make sure that we don't just uh, stick with one or two countries anymore. All right. So this is our schedule for Senegal and Gambia. This is March 31st, to April 10th. I'm working on an adjustment to make it March 30th because I want to add an extra day in the Gambia for us because we have so many people in the Gambia and I want to add to make it two free days to where we're able to organize certain things because I'm trying to bring more of our people in the Gambia together. As a matter of fact, it's the same for every country. Uh, wherever we go, we're looking for people from the African diaspora that's living in the country and we're looking for um, you know, people on the, in that country directly to connect with that understand the vision of us coming together as a people. Uh, so these are the things that I've been doing. I've been doing more live streams with different uh, you know, people in the Gambia and different countries. So I'm going to keep on working on those things. That way we can just really just have this uh, incredible connections across uh, several or more countries in Africa to where we connect. And the idea is when we have everything set up there in Ghana, since most of the countries in West Africa, you know, to give you an example, you know, from our community, we can have, you know, we can have our nice uh, a ship that goes up to you know, it goes up to Liberia, Sierra Leone, Gambia, and Senegal. And that is something that you don't really see here on the African continent. You have all of this incredible waterways that's in West Africa. So when I'm telling people about us building investments in, in the different countries, all those countries I mentioned to you are all on the coast and they're all on, and they're select specifically for the access of doing different kinds of business. And I was I spent four and a half years in the Navy and in, it taught me how to appreciate uh, the world of being out there in the water, uh, which I was never really open to because I thought I would just be in the Navy working, you know, working on a jet base and working on aircrafts on a jet, jet base. But it told me that, that that doesn't work like that. When you're in the Navy, you have to go to sea. And but I appreciate this going out there for six months, which I'll never do again. Uh, but it was the greatest experience ever. Um, and, you know, it takes and you know, I respect all the men and the women that dedicate themselves to because you have to this make a whole lot of adjustments and you're away from your family and everything. Uh, and, you know, and it's uh, one of those incredible missions, but, you know, we can use uh, ships and get into level of tourism, you know, just like how we do it in the Caribbean, where, you know, you go from one island to the next and so on. So we've got great plans. I'm working with a lot of, lot of people so we can work those things out. And uh, the first schedule that I've added is a Liberia Reconnection and Investment Tour. Now, I'm still doing a whole lot of research and studies on Liberia, and my brother Kala Genesis has been able to just really explain a lot of things on some of the videos that we've done. And, and you know, you talk about the original settlement of 1822, you know, 200 years of just a first set of stolen Africans returning to the ancestral land. Uh, so Liberia and Sierra Leone is that great connection. So we're gonna be working with uh, our brothers and sisters that's in uh, Sierra Leone, and we're gonna really build a strong connection. And I may make some adjustments to the Senegal and the Gambia tour 
this is probably my last time going to Senegal. We we'll probably change it to something else, maybe Liberia and the Gambia, or uh, somewhere around that line, or maybe Sierra Leone and the Gambia, and things like that. And the reason why we still go to Senegal is just it has that incredible history of Gori Island. It has that great uh, uh, statue, and it also has some incredible museums. And then the, the final one I have, uh, South Africa Roots and Culture Journey. Uh, that's December 24th to January 4th. So that's um, similar to the journey that we took in 2019, that wonderful historical journey. And we were always looking, always looking to go back and then uh, the pandemic hits and then we just had to make adjustment. So what I'm telling everyone that's interested in any of these journeys, once they click on a link, it reroutes you to the website. And then once you get to the website, it's gonna give you a full tour overview itinerary, general terms, visa information if you need a visa. The only countries that I have here that don't need a visa is South Africa and Senegal. All the other countries, uh, you require a visa. And what I have is the visa information. And it's something that I can help anyone with. If they need help with a passport, visa, those things I can help them with. Uh, and I have no problem with doing that because sometimes if you're just interested in traveling to Africa, you may not just, you know, it may not just be as simple as that for you. So on this news that, you know, when you keep on scrolling down, you see groups and this was the last, this was the only group that we have had over 20 uh, since uh, the COVID-19 protocol era. And that was uh, December 20, 20, sorry, December 2019. And that was, I wanna say about uh, 22 of us. And after that, it was basically between um, anywhere from nine to 15 of us from those other journeys. That's right here, what I highlight is just the videos and photos of previous tours. So on YouTube, I have over 3,000 videos, and those 3,000 videos cover nine of the 10 African countries that I've been to and traveled to. The only country it doesn't include is Kenya. I do have a Kenya uh, video from our Senegal, South Africa, and Kenya trip. Uh, that was 2005, and that was one of the first times I actually started taking people in like a small group. Uh, with me to Africa, and it was it was outside of our Africa for the Africans brand. It was just something we were just doing just to do some documentation, and I had a chance to go to Kenya for a few days, and just went, and I loved it. But you know, unfortunately, I never had a chance to go back because I ended up spending a lot of time building the Ghana brand. So maybe you know, in the future, we can add it and things like that. And there's a few other incredible countries that I want to go to, uh, and it's just all about scheduling and things like that. And I'll show you more on the, uh, the YouTube uh, page. But uh, these videos uh, represent um, countries, um, Senegal, the Gambia, Ghana, Togo, Benin, those five countries in West Africa, then South Africa, then you have Ethiopia, Tanzania, and Egypt. And then the other country that's um, mentioned is this, uh, Kenya that uh, we don't have the videos for. And I was talking about South Africa. This is us right here, just all excited in South Africa. So what I have is a general topic right here. Usually I have these things, it's a lot to literally go over. Uh, so I kind of just put it together and usually just go over it in uh, summary details. So the introduction uh, that we have is just, really just uh, letting everyone know that this is something that we dedicated to and I worked my way up from traveling in 2004 and 2005, going to, you know, basically going to a few countries. And it took me a while to find the right country. In 2006, that's when I went to the fifth country, the Gambia. And then I was like, this is perfect. We can work something with, with this energy right here as far as roots and culture. And then I went to Ghana and it was just, it had the elements of things that we could build from. So I used that as a foundation to build and then once you know you get established, then you start branching off to other countries. And so here are the fresh links for documentation. And as I, as I mentioned, tour overview, general terms, and tour itinerary. So we really want everyone to like click on the link and go through the details and read it. But that's the biggest issue that I've had is, you know, we have information, and sometimes people don't necessarily read the information. But we always tell everyone that it's your responsibility if you're going to make this level of investments, whether it's a tour or, or investment, you want to make sure that you read all details and be clear on it. Because every business that people like myself do, you have general terms. And in those general terms, you have 
refundable and non-refundable. And it's just a science of this business and things like that, because it's just a complicated situation that you're working out and you try to offer as much flexible option if someone can't make this journey or something you work a transfer for them, whether it's, um, you know, whether it's, and it just depends on how it works because sometimes at the last set of last minutes, everything's already paid for and set already. So you only can salvage so much. So you just do your best because you want to encourage people to go. So you just kind of work things out as best as possible. And ever since the COVID-19 protocol, I've not been able to, to, to do a group booking. Usually the group booking requires a minimum of 10 people and you just basically organize with the, the with mainly Delta Airlines is what I work with. As a matter of fact, that's usually what I work with Delta Airlines for all of our group booking from 2007 all the way to uh, 2019. And that allows us to just basically make payments on tickets and it also give us a lot of flexible options if we need to change or adjust. Now, Delta Airlines is this idea. I just love how they do business and they operate. Not saying those things because you know, I'm a former employee and things like that, but uh, they just really deliver on their professionalism. And you now I've seen the technicians work on the jets and they're serious. Those jets are not going down. Yeah, you know, they spend a lot of money and a lot of time and pay the technicians you know, the big bucks to make sure that uh, these things are operational and work efficiency. And then also the customer service on their flights is much better. I traveled on United and I was just disappointed by how they just do business and things like that. But um, nevertheless, you know, the main thing is if, you know, it's as long as they get you there safe, that's what matters. So when individuals have to purchase tickets, you know, whatever carriers get you there, that's all that matters. And, you know, we usually work it out to where we just have airport pickups if you're not coming with us directly, because sometimes people come a few days earlier and sometimes they may come a day later or something or come on a later flight. And what we're doing is a uh, tour preparation. The two set of clothing I usually recommend to bring is outfits with a combination of our Pan-African colors, red, black, green, and gold, or red, black, and green. And then also, uh, white outfits and that's usually for certain ceremonies. Sometimes we have ceremonies going to the African Holocaust dungeons and things like that. And we just try to just be all in uniform together to this, you know, we're, we just have an energy of solidarity. And so most of the, the, the group photos you're gonna see, you're gonna see us in these Africa for Africans uh, shirt. Uh, and they usually have the colors of red, black, green, and gold. So you can always wear that. And also you can always just bring what you need to bring to connect. And as I'm looking at these big groups, it's like family. I just miss them big, them, th those wonderful days. But uh, you know, we all have to just make the adjustments just to make it work. So there it goes from 2006 to 2021, 15 straight years of our Africa for Africans tours and investment business. And what I have is a Facebook group. Now, not everybody's on Facebook, but uh, having these groups also is a way to, to market to other people because. You have a ridiculous amount of people on Facebook. I don't know what their network is about now. Probably almost, uh, I don't know if it's, it's probably almost 2 billion people that they have uh, on Facebook, you know, it's just that popular. Um, and so with these groups, what you do is just post updates, conference calls, videos as best as possible. And then just try to get people to join the group and you know, keep posted of information. And as I scroll down the newsletter, this is this one of those galleries which you have with all of the video, videos, all of the photo galleries of just all of the tours itself. And when you're on the website and you're scrolling up and down, uh, you literally see these in, in, a, in a bigger view. And it goes from December 2021 all the way to December 2006, which just commenced straight 15 years. Uh, so. When everyone, anyone is looking to travel to Africa, you know, this is a serious expert operation and networking to make this work because you, people see the group, but they don't necessarily see the work that has work that is put into making these groups and what you have to do to organize everything to a T. And the only journey that we have done outside of the African continent was Brazil. And I'm just happy that I had that one time to go to Brazil because I was never able to just get it back on a schedule where interest was shown. Uh, but that was a nice journey. Uh, my mother went with me also, and that was, and then a few of my um, 
you know, a few of my uh, ex uh, Navy brothers uh, went on that journey and, you know, a few of my folks here from uh, Georgia. So that was a great experience, beautiful beach, very tropical, incredible country. The only issue is that, uh, you know, it's, you have to learn some Portuguese or what I like to do in all countries that uh, don't speak English, you just hire people who do translation. And whether you're going out or you're doing your movements throughout the, uh, you know, throughout the country, you know, you have that set up. So we always have English speaking tour guides and assistants to help in every country, regardless of whatever language they speak. And then the closing part of the newsletter, just make sure that I have all of these things set up. Um, you click on the link is for Facebook, Twitter, website, email, YouTube, and Instagram. And the next thing I'm switching to is our website, AfricaForAfricans.org. That's me and uh, Julius Nahiri, the first president of Tanzania. You know, so I'm giving him a strong black fist because he's a truly revolutionary energy that have transformed that uh, beautiful country of Tanzania. Now, so that was one of the iconic uh, photos when we're there in the Declaration Museum. Um, and you know, I'm one of them people who have their museums in any country. We usually put all of them on the list, especially if it's in our route and things like that, because I feel like museums are underrated. Uh, and every time I go, we go to museums, I honestly, we're usually the only people there. And I always ask people, are, you know, do people come to the museum? But it's one of those things where if we don't invest and pay entrance fees and things like that, the museums are going to close up. And these museums represent our history and things like that. So, you know, whenever I go, I'm just doing videos and just trying to get people, encourage people, whether they come with us or go by themselves and you're in a country, just take time out, spend a few dollars that it costs to go to the museum and then, you know, just learn some history, do some documentation and share with family and friends. And uh, I just paused that uh, picture, I let the rest of uh, the photos are side by. And then we have our music play on the left, and I call it Love and Revolutionary, MP3 Nation Building Mix. So it's a combination of cultural music um, and beautiful soul music. Most of it is reggae, but also you have other genres of music on there also. And it was just trying to find the best music that uh, complement the flow of what we're doing. Now, the main thing that I have on the website always is this to tell everyone that it's set up to where it's a, you know, it's a, a detailed website. It's more information than anything else. Now we do have a lot of pictures and a lot of things like that, but it's, you know, it's, we have so much information that we just had to organize it. So when you're on the main menu, uh, we have our only investment operation that we have, which is Black Star Pan-African Community. And I'm always telling everyone that outside of all of those people that do this kind of business, uh, it's only a few people who have communities. We literally have laid out the foundation of what we have on the website to where all of the legal documents are there. So if someone is thinking about what we're doing, they can process it, they can check out the videos. And then also if they need to just confirm what the documents we have uh, with the people in the country or they need to go check it out, it's for that purpose because we want everyone to do their research before they make commitments to anything that we do. Because what we're looking for when, when you make commitments with us we're looking for a lifetime commitment because uh, we're, we're building a, a lifetime community for generations. And that community will be a strength and power to where we can connect with other people in other parts of Africa um, and connect with uh, our Ghanaian brothers and just work directly with them more organized because it's hard to just go to the African continent by yourself and say you're just gonna live with the people and it's just not that simple. You wanna build something with your people from the diaspora so you can connect better with the people in the country and you're able to do a lot more. So, you know, some people don't always feel what I was talking about as far as a community, because we've been talking about it since 2004, when we, you know, when I was working with another group and I've worked with several groups after that. And my only purpose at that time was literally to connect our people to options, you know, because I'm always hearing different things about America, but I don't ever let's really look into it like that. You know, people have been telling me that America is going to fall for a long time. And, you know, maybe it is one day, but at the same time too, the best thing to do in general, regardless if that's the case or not, the majority of our people are going to be here. So you want to keep a connection between, uh, you know, the African diaspora and the African continent and, you know, our main base in you know, America. So that's what that community is about. And it's literally create opportunities for our children 
at a literally fresh age. Now, my goal is always to just recruit uh, children from 13 to 19 and get them into the things that I was privileged to get into in uh, electrical and electronic uh, technical systems, um, working on aircraft, working on computers, uh, cars, and, and, you know, and all these uh, technical machines. And it's a, you know, it's a great skill and a great opportunity for, especially for young men, you want young men to be out there using their hands to do nation building and things like that. But the unfortunate situation that we have uh, in the African continent, if you're trying to learn some of the things I just mentioned to you, you you're gonna have to end up going to you know, Europe or America. And do they have these um, facilities in Africa? Absolutely, I was in Ethiopia and I was just impressed because they had an incredible aviation maintenance uh, facility. And I just, it just reminded me of what uh, Delta Airlines have here in Atlanta. And it was just a little you know, smaller scale. Yeah. You know, so you do have those options, but at the same time too, some of the options are gonna be minimum and things like that. So what we have to do is we have to bring the skills to the continent and set up shop and set things up. And the same thing I told my little boy, he's 11 years old, he's in there playing video games, hopefully, and talking with his friends, hopefully you don't hear him in the background. But I'm always telling him that that's what we have for our generations, that we're not just going to send you guys out there to the world and tell you to figure it out or do what me and some of my friends had to do. We had to figure out, do we really want to go to college or, and some of us decided, let's, let's just join the military and things like that. And our parents wasn't really happy with us, but at the same time too, they don't want us working for minimum wage, but they don't want us going in the military. And I tell them, well, we're not exactly college material because sometimes you're just not ready for you know, college and university and things like that. Uh, and sometimes it's best to go get that military money and, uh, you know, and pay for your technical school. And that's what I ended up doing and got this wonderful position down here in Atlanta working for the airlines uh, after I got out of the Navy. So, you know, we're just trying to just find different ways to progress our generation because I don't feel that our children, especially in America, can really compete with the likes of the, like the Asian uh, children of whether China or India, uh, because they don't play when it comes to when, you know, certain things and education. When the whole COVID era was shut down, they didn't miss a beat. You know, they, they transformed TV into a learning studio for children. And I, I even seen many clips of where children were just positioned in front of TVs and they were just getting a full course of this education uh, and things like that. So we just want to do our part uh, to make sure that um, we, you know, we build this and we don't sit around and wait for other people to do it. Because a lot of times we talk big game and we literally sit around and wait for so much other people to do it. And, you know, like my good brother told me um, you know, when they were trying to recruit me into the Black Power Movement, because I was telling them, you know, what, you know, what I'm working on is building something for my family and everything. And, and, and you know, they explained that, you know, it has to go beyond just your family and things like that. And I tell them, okay, that, that sounds good. Yeah, let's do this. Uh, and unfortunately, they're not around, but, you know, I carried on what, you know, we agreed to. And that's the issue that I have with a lot of our people talk a lot of big stuff. You know, they see, you know, you see them with all the books and everything, and they can break down the science of the world and all these wonderful things, which is always impressive. But we have to go beyond book knowledge and be practical. And that's what I enjoy about being a technician. You know, you, you study, the, you know, you study the, the courses and things like that, but then you get put on live situations to work on, you know, work on machines or work on projects. Uh, so when I'm talking about things that I'm talking about, simulators. Simulators is one of the greatest training tools. Uh, I went to a class uh, in flight safety that taught us how to do this incredible aircraft maintenance troubleshooting to reduce the time of whenever someone said that they have a problem and we go out there and fix it. And you know, those kind of training methods is the tactics that you know, we're looking to bring. And that's why we have 15 plus 60 acres of land. And we're looking to get more land by the, by the beach so we can get into what we miss out on Jamaica. If you look at Jamaica, it's as this incredible coast from, any, from Negril to Montego Bay, to Ocho Rios, to Port Antonio. You're talking about some of the richest corporations in the world that are built resorts. So even if some of us want to put our money together and build certain things, it's going to be very hard to compete. Uh, so what we have is, you know, we have access to that entire coast in West Africa. And I'm talking about from all the way from Senegal, all the way down to Ghana and beyond. It's, it is very undeveloped with those options. So those are things that we can create. So building the foundation that Blackstar allows us to just have leverage to really just connect with people and really just make that work. So anyone that's ever interested in that information, they can just click on the link and read through the articles and then just reach out to me and I'll just connect them in full details. All right. The Africa uh, tour books that we have, and I'm just gonna click on this real quick and then pause the music. That's me right there, my good brother, Mali, uh, one of our best tour guides, brothers that's very humble in this professional. 
and that's the school that we're at and you know that's one of our passions we are you know we we, sh we show energy of always doing things for our children and we appreciate everyone that sends donation to give to the children of school supplies and we're going to keep that going on forever and we just wanted to just kind of expand more on it they don't just want to do that we want to just you know connect with the people who want to build schools and you know we all do our part and then my goal is to recruit some of our people in these professions from the airlines the military and say hey you serve th those options now come with us to africa and let's do something for our future and i'm just going to scroll through these uh, tour books um, and this tour book it has a schedule it has research um, on the country and the different sites that we're going to So these digital tour books, you can you can share them, but also you can download them, and then you know it just give you just a whole lot of information. So every time we do a journey, my goal is to make sure that we write a tour book. And some countries a little it's a little rough, like Liberia. I'm gonna have to really put some serious work into Liberia to write a fresh uh, tour book because all other countries I have tour books, and I just literally need to just make sure that uh, you know we just keep modifying them and sharing them. And I'm looking at different options to print in them. I, I do offer a digital version, but at the same time, to the one of the main thing is to provide a printed out version of the tour books. That way, when anyone come to the office, I usually have extra tour books I can give them and things like that and, and materials as I usually try to get people to come over here so they can see what we're doing and do a full presentation. So those are all my 2021 tour books. And then what I've done is this, um, I didn't upload all of them because it's a whole lot of tour books. I just kind of showed it to where we have countries, like that's our South Africa tour book right there. And this has been a long time, Ghana, Togo, Benin. And that's just to give people a feel of the tour books. All right, so let me get back to the, the main menu. Now the newsletter that uh, we were reading earlier, I have them loaded to where once you click on this link right here, it opens up and it shows you all of the previous newsletters with all of the information of all of the tours and investment that I share uh, throughout the month. Right. And then below that, before we get to all the tour schedule is the uh, is Africa repatriation co consultation and relocation support. For those that are literally serious that want to put together a game plan, that's what I sit down with people, whether they come here or we do it on Zoom or do it over the phone, and organize things because we have a lot of people that's packing up and moving to Africa and they're destroying their lives. I'm like, I'm tired of seeing people come back homeless and people come back and losing everything. Because what we have is a situation where uh, people pack up everything that they, they, they have, like literally pack up everything that they have and or sell and give away certain things. And they have like a one journey. It's kind of like, you know, somebody saying a sign that say, Gambia or bus, and unfortunately they end up being bus because you're not organized and prepared uh, for these things. And you go in there to the country as an individual and you're not really participating in corporate economics because that's what's gonna be a survival. Some people have more than enough retirement money to just live wonderful in Africa forever. But even if you do, you know, to make a bigger impact, you know, we have to come together better. Uh, I'm seeing too many individuals all over the place and things just wondering and trying to figure things out. Uh, so I'm always telling people, I'm, before any of these other YouTube personalities that are even more popular than myself was just out there, we were doing what we're doing and we're doing it still organic and on a high level. It's just, I'm not into being on YouTube, entertaining people and things. As a matter of fact, as soon as my videos start, we start talking. Uh, we're not saying no like, share, subscribe, or donate or anything like that. I just wanna share what we need to share and leave it up to the audience and individuals to connect with us. And just also trying to show people our true passion of what we're really about. And the rest of the website is just, uh, just scroll down uh, on the main menu, is just the, uh, the, the tours that we went over, the links that we, what I have on the newsletter. And then go down some more payment options. I have some articles that I wrote uh, in earlier times on repatriation and investment. And then my favorite one uh, down here is uh, Marcus Garvey Vision. And then I have general articles where I just have some poetry articles and I wanted to do more on that link, uh, but uh, the Marcus Garvey vision is exciting. Uh, it's just, I mean, I use some of the excerpts from his book, the philosophies and opinion and other uh, resources. 
And when you just read in the poetic words of this great visionary, and, you, and sometimes I have to look back on my uh, computer and look at the date and say 2022. And then when you're looking at this and it say 1920 or, or in the 1920s, and you're like, wow, it's a hundred years ago. And then you're thinking about what happened from that time to this time and the loss of that connection of what we should have been continuing to build. And that's why I feel so dedicated that we just have to, regardless of Ebola, COVID-19, world war crisis or whatever it is we're going to keep that dedication because once we lose certain momentum it throws us off and that's what happened during that time frame and the rest of it is our uh, supporting documents uh, about us uh, i have my bio on there because uh, i like to just show people uh where we came from our struggles and everything so it, you know it shows you know the, the information that's from this highlighting this being born in Jamaica in 1977 and uh, what our family did to this move to uh, New York and going to technical school in New York and joining the military and so on and up to this journey and just showing people who they're doing business with and everything. I think it's very important that we let people know our passion and what we're about and things like that. So I'm more believing like a focus group of people, people that you build a relationship with and you just, you know, work together and things like that. So that's what, you know, we're about. So Anyone who wants any of this information can just click on the details and view it. I also have a contact, uh, Bomani, on WhatsApp, so where someone can just click on the link and send me a message and things like that. And so next thing, let me just briefly uh, just go to our, our YouTube page. So once you get to YouTube, you can click on videos at the top or you can click on playlists. But if you just leave it on the home page, you're going to see my, my featured video, my brother uh, O'Shea Duke Jackson on Ken Ganda. Uh, that was a nice interview. Um, Usually I just put these interviews up and replace it with another one in the future. But this one, it was a, just a beautiful interview to us really to share with people, you know, what we're really into. And then going down, you're gonna see uploads, whatever the latest videos that what we have is just in uploads. And once you click on uploads, it will load 3000 videos. And if you click on play all, it will literally play forever. Uh, what you won't have is commercials because when I'm here with people that I'm doing business with, I'm doing presentations, I don't have time to be skipping, skipping. And a lot of times you spend so much time in the country recording videos because you want to relive the memory. Like I'm always playing back our sunset cruise there on Zanzibar Island. I just love that cruise. We were just out there on our boat cruising around and the drummers were playing you know, nice drum music. And then we we're just there sipping on our drinks and just smiling and just having a great time. Just, you know, you just you and your brothers and sisters just enjoying it. So that's the, the harmony we, we connect to where when people meet and travel with us, they can just you know, they get to meet new friends and you know, expand our network. So the multiple playlists, in this case right here, represent uh, basically our journey since the COVID um, era. So we started off with Tanzania. Excuse me, let me see back. Sometimes I forget when this, this thing all this uh, literally happened, but it literally happened in 2020 because we had to cancel Senegal and the Gambia in April 2020 and canceled Ghana May 2020 and did not really cancel us, basically rescheduled them. But we end up this Tanzania end up being that that journey that we kicked off, uh, you, know, you know, kicked off that era with. And then we just uh, went to Ghana, then we went to Senegal and the Gambia, went back to Ghana, uh, which in that Ghana, May and June, we went to different places outside of our tour once a group left. And I didn't tell them what we were gonna do because we didn't even know what we were doing. Uh, took me and my boy and then uh, some of my friends, we went to Aqua Safari and went to Treasure Island, which is off uh, River Volta out there in, out there in, uh, it's in the greater Accra region. It's uh, at one point I thought it was uh, the Eastern region, but it's still there in the greater Accra region. And it's about two hours away from, uh, you know, from the main parts of uh, Accra. Uh, so those are some of the things that uh, we're checking out and letting people know that we have options of things that they ever wanted us do any kind of special events. We have venues and we have things available in all of the countries to just make their, you know, whatever they're looking to do special. So I shared some of those highlights uh, and things. Then um, Tanzania, November, 2021 and uh, Ghana, December, 2021. I'm still uploading videos. And I mean, honestly, we have that much videos, but at the same time too, I don't feel right just, just uploading all of the videos at one time. So you just, you'll see the videos little by little and sometimes I'm showing Tanzania videos and Ghana videos. And, and, and so on and going back and forth. So then I have people call me and ask me, which country are you in? And I'll tell them, I was like, family, the dates are on there. You gotta look at the dates, you know? I was like, we have too much documentation to put it out. I even still have 
pictures from you know, Ghana, May, and even Senegal that you consistently put in out. So when I show you on Facebook, you just see all these galleries. But that's my dedication to provide this documentation because I have family in Jamaica that you know, they may not have a chance to enjoy some of these things. So you know, I'm doing this for some of our brothers and sisters, even some of our friends that I grew up with in uh, Brooklyn, New York, that I've, that I've never, um, probably will never leave Brooklyn or never, never, never leave New York. So I'm always encouraging them to say, family, this is us all over the world and join paradise. And what we're doing, we're connecting with other black people. And, we're, and what we're doing, we're spending money with all black people, black hotels. Uh, it's like only one or two countries where we don't have completely all black owned hotels. But I try to make sure that we do the best we can do because it's all about us supporting black owned business and building black owned business. That's just our passion, our dedication from day one. That's all some people that even when they look at uh, my Egypt documentary uh, with uh, great uh, scholars, uh, may you rest in peace and power, Dr. Renoka Rashidi, that, you know, that taught me many things and taught me about this business itself. And, you know, and was very impressed the fact that I wanted to do it. And, and, you know, he thought I was going to do Egypt, but I was telling him that I leave those things up to the great scholars. I'm not even there yet. I'm still studying, but, you know, Ghana represent modern countries where you can do repatriation investment and things like that and grow. Now, so that documentary uh, in Egypt just, you know, was us just talking about our vision of Africa and, you know, what we as a people can do. And it's just, it's, it's, it's strange because I'm looking at myself at 26 years old now, 44, and I'm like, wow, you know, you know, we, we were just, you know, we were still at the same energy. And that's what I tell people, you know, what, some of us are about that life and we have dedicated our life. And I tell people, this is my, this is what I'm dedicated to, you know, until the end of time uh, and things like that. But, you know, unfortunately, some of us join certain movements and connections. And it's kind of like, it's kind of like fashion, you know, one minute this fashion and the next minute another fashion is. But if you're really dedicated to the, the movement of our ancestors and what our ancestors did for us and all the sacrifices that they made, I tell people join the operation, join the movement, and let's build this together. Uh, so that's the Black Star Pan African community. Uh, that's the link with this, all the videos from conference calls to us on the land, to showing you um, the houses that's being built and so on. And you know, once you scroll down, you just see more of the playlists um, and different playlists. And you know, sometimes I have playlists where our friends come on over and we talk about relationships or we're talking about uh, Pan African consciousness and things like that. So. It's just a lot of documentation on the, these videos and it's um, mainly there to show people what we're about and things like that so people can know who we are and make a decision like, do I wanna do business with this person or, or not? So we put all of our cards on the table and let people decide what they need to do. That's why I'm always telling people the best thing to do about when you're looking at anything is to do research and compare it. You know, getting back to the mindset of science All right, so this is my uh, personal Facebook page, and I put a lot of pictures up, so I'm going to hit photos, and then I'm going to hit album. All right, so those are some of the, so when you hit photos, uh, you're going to see the pictures that I tagged myself into, so I'm still tagging photos from like 20, uh, from last year um, in Senegal, the Gambia, and uh, Ghana, so I'm gonna be tagging some other photos, but hey, Juma, I see, uh, I see you, me, you, and uh, our sister right there in the middle. And, um, and these are all of our, our galleries. And I try to just make them artful as possible. And you know, the science of these things is you're taking photos that's gonna connect people to say, hey, this is a beautiful group of black people and they're just, they all dressed up nice and they're smiling, they're happy and things like that. So. You, 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 you'll see from December, 2021, which I'm still loading photos in, in that one in November, and you scroll all the way down and you'll just see a whole 15 years of this photo galleries. And Facebook was the only network that I found that I can do this with. I can like abuse their network and upload all of my videos and photos, mainly just uh, photos. And then the same thing with YouTube, And you know, it just, it just be becomes one of those situations where you, know, you can just connect more with your people. That's, that's, that's little Bomani Dakari you know, as, as a baby. And I know people like, why you put all your business online? I was like, well, I wanna let people know that I'm a real and true person and I'm about just us, you know, us connecting. That's my Jamaican family right there. You know, 
my, you know, my, you know, my younger brother and sister, you know, that, which was the only ones in my direct family that was born in America. All of us are born Jamaicans. And uh, picture with me and my dad, you know, in the early Atlanta days when, you know, when, you know, when I, you know, first got the house down here and he's like, he's proud of me that, you know, got a house and everything. And I was like, yeah, you know, we're trying to just do something for ourselves and things like that. So, you know, that's my whole life being um, on display and just wanted us to let people know that this is what we're doing. So support the movement and let's do this together strong. All right, so family, let me uh, stop the uh, screen sharing. And let me just change the views to gallery view or. So yes, family, uh, that is um, my uh, uh, presentation. I've gone through all of the documentation. So anyone that's looking to literally connect with us, they can literally just see all these things per the flow of presentation. But the most important thing is for individuals to just go through this and check it out. So I'm gonna open things up and hopefully uh, we have lots of wonderful questions. So family, anyone have any questions or wanna talk and dialogue with me, just uh, unmute themselves and then just uh, introduce yourself and then let's uh, dialogue. Okay, so I'm gonna go over this one more time. I know you've probably already said it, right? The only thing we need, oh, this is, my name is Juma Rafiki. I'm out here in Los Angeles, um, former Air Force veteran, you know, military guy just like yourself. And I've been on several trips with you to, oh, yeah. to Ghana, to Senegal, to the Gambia, and now to uh, Tanzania. And then, we, and then we'll get to the South Africa next year. Yeah. I don't, too many white people down there for me, but I, I, I'll look at it. I'll think about it. You know, I'm trying not to do a whole bunch of white people. Anyway, so um, uh, won't need. Only thing we'll need is our our COVID sh shot card, right? Ah, uh, yes, that's it. And no vaccine vaccines. No vaccination, man. The other thing you're gonna need to do is we have to pay for a um, a COVID rapid test, and a rapid test is a quick test that's usually result in like 15 to 20 minutes. You pay for that ahead of time, and it's uh, ten dollars compared to the one fifty in Ghana. And then you, when you get to the, the port of entry, which is Kilimanjaro Airport, then uh, you go through that process and you take it, and then they'll give you results, and then we're off into the country. So you're saying you're tested when you enter and, and before you leave. Oh yes, you're going. Uh, yes, and uh, let me just make sure I go over this uh, clear with everybody. We're gonna all take a PCR test three days before we travel to get on to get to any of the countries that we go into because all the airlines require for us to have a clean a PCR COVID test that shows negative and okay. it has to be within uh, 72 hours. But then when you go to the physical country like Ghana and Tanzania, they want you to take another test, which is a rapid test. And then when you leave all of the countries, the airlines are requiring you to do another PCR COVID test with a result that shows negative within 72 hours. Okay. So I have all of those things set up to make sure it gets done for everybody. So I can, I can take my PCR test at the VA three days prior to getting on the plane. That's perfect. Uh, you know, I like you, man. You really work the, the VA system a lot, man. And I've been trying to make sure, I, you know, make sure at one point when I worked for the lines, I literally just forgot about the VA benefits and I was literally paying for health, health insurance. Big man, I, I wasted so much money. <laughs> yeah, big mistake because if there's a way for you to get a, a service-connected pension at 100%, that's an extra $3,500 a month for the rest of your life. Yeah, you're not going to be talking about that when we get off uh, <laughs> um, uh, and things like that, uh, because it's some of the things that unfortunately sometimes, you know, we don't we don't think about the benefits that we have. And that's why I say I appreciate you just using yeah. the veteran benefit, using long, much longer than I have. And, you know, regardless if you're there for a few years or for, for, the, the, you know, for the, the career, you know, you know, it's something that you earned. And my friends always have to tell me that it's like your brother, you have earned this. No, it's no, it's, it's not a freebie. It's, it's more than just something that we've earned. I mean, they're not going to ever give us reparations. So you take from them whatever you can take because they will do it to us and they continue to do it to us now here is um i got my um my uh, my visa i don't know if you can see that oh yeah congratulations um you 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 jump you aren't playing around you know i told you that like you you make you can wait about three to three two to three months before you do it but you was like no nah, i want to knock it out no i'll but, go ahead and knock mine out so know? that's what i love about tanzania and also the Tanzania visa family is the best visa because you don't have to submit your passport or submit anything other than an image copy. 
Yeah. And then they and give you a digital uh, visa where you print out and put in your, your passport. Right. And this doesn't expire until November 17th, 2023, because I got, um, I paid a hundred dollars for mine and went on and got it. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. And, and then it gives you multiple entry. Um, and the only other country, the other countries that we have, uh, Ghana, you can get up to five years. And then uh, the Gambia, you can get up to five years also. Other, right. other than that, uh, the rest of the countries that we have, they're just given one year visas. Right. So in Tanzania, we're still drinking bottled water. Don't drink the water, right? Yes, uh, that's just my recommendation. Uh, like I always tell people, be, be, uh, I don't know what's going on in the world, but you know something is going on, and um, whatever they put in the water, I'm not drinking it. But yes, yeah. you want to make sure that you you do your best and things like that, uh, because the way water is purified in different countries is completely different. Just like I live here in Georgia, and you know I'm used to the, if I get used to the water in Georgia here, and I go to New York, you know I may get poisoned. Yeah, well I, I don't drink the water here in Los Angeles. I mean I just drink bottled water. Don't your water come specifically from the Pacific Ocean? Well, you know what? I don't know where this water is coming. They just say it's been purified, and uh, I, that's what I prefer to do. I, I don't drink it out of the tap at all. Just make sure you get some spring water. That's ideal. Yeah. Purified water means basically recycled, you know, right. recycled so, uh, water. I don't have a lot of questions. I mean, I just always would like to tune in and encourage everybody to always take these trips with you. I've taken multiple trips with you. And I encourage everybody, everybody that if they can to take the trips to Gambia and, um, and Senegal. I mean, one of the, the great highlights of, of that trip was when we were on a barge crossing the, uh, the Gambian River. That was one of the most exciting times I'd ever had in my life. And going to Kuta Kente's cell, his actual holding cell on the island. So for the rest of you guys, if you get a chance to do that, I enc highly encourage you to do that. It's, it's a... It was a great trip. So I'm gonna let Sian, uh, she probably has a question or two. Yeah, anybody have any questions, uh, go ahead. And I have, well, honey, this is Sian. Um, about South Africa, the visa, do we need a visa or? No, they don't, you don't need a visa unless you're staying in South Africa for over uh, 90 days. And I'll, 90 days. I'll, and I'll also double check on that, but that was the last set of uh, situations we have when we went to South Africa. So South Africa okay. and Senegal doesn't require a visa. Yeah, because Courtney was saying that it seemed like that's a better trip right yeah. now than Ghana. There's so much issues going on with them. So the if they want to get Ghana is if we just mm -hmm. if we get them a little time, maybe they'll change. But uh, if if nothing else, we can definitely get you on and any of those journeys. And I do plan on adding even Tanzania for November next year. Just I wanted to show the the schedule of this bunch of different countries, and even May next yeah. year for Ghana. Uh, you know, I wanted to add that, but I wanted to make sure we go and come back from both of those journeys before we add it and give the other country that's a, a little shine. Uh, so yeah, we'd love to have you in South Africa. It's all good. Yeah, both. Yeah. God and South Africa. <laughs> and then your new friend Juma is going to be there also, and he's, he's, he's fun to travel with. <laughs> we, you know, we're friendly people. We're Jamaicans. We're always friendly. We're accommodating. <laughs> yeah, I mean... If I could ever go to uh, South Africa, man, I would give my right arm to be able to uh, to to be at an uh, EEF event with Julius Malema. Yes, yes, absolutely. Because I put his picture up on my wall. I think, uh, you know, what he's doing down there with the EF, EFFF, and uh, I've been trying to contact him to become a member, and I would really love to uh, to actually meet him and have my picture taken on him because they're really doing good work down there to try to get as much of the land and their resources back that were stolen from them from the Dutch. Yeah, absolutely, brother. Um, absolutely. And that's why we're trying to just connect with more African countries because there's so many different things going on in so much different countries. And, you know, we have a big population here in the diaspora. And, um, you know, different people are going to connect to different countries. Like right now, you know, you see our brother Goham, our brother Rakin. You know, I'm just proud of him, man. I, he, he's, he's making it happen in Sierra Leone. Yeah, he sure is. I mean, I see him on there all the time, and uh, he gives you a lot of good information, too. And I think he got his citizenship, didn't he? Oh, yes, he has a Sierra Leone passport. So yeah. it's one of those things where when, if, if people, um, DNA come back to Sierra Leone, um, any of the tribes, that's that's my number one, That's my well, not number one, that's my only go-to person there, man, because the brother supported me. He's been, he been to five five countries with me. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, well, I can't do Sierra Leone. We have on the schedule. I found out that my DNA is from Gabon. 
uh, next to the to the uh, Rep Democratic Republic of the Congo. Well, you all right? Yeah. Um, so, are, are you going there? Not without you. <laughs> but uh, I mean, like you say, you don't want to go to these places. Uh, a lot of places, you know, by yourself. I'm not naive. I mean, you know what I mean. I know this. I'm not naive to go to some place down there and. Um, uh, is, Africa has a lot of safe places, but don't get it twisted. You know what I'm saying? They, they'll they come after you too. I mean, if they think they can get something from you. I've had friends robbed in Nigeria, so I don't know. Yeah, and that's why, as you notice, when I do certain countries, we do countries that are countries that have uh, tourist foundation and things exactly. like that. And we, you know, everyone is more than secure here. And then the people traveling with us, I tell them, come out with me and uh, me and my brothers and we, yeah. we take you around to the club and you're good. The only thing that that, that that aggravates me is that white people are safer going there by themselves than we are. Oh yes, brother, that's unfortunate. I mean, that just aggravates the hell out of me. You know what I mean? Yes, yeah, one of those uh, situations. Um, and you know, when they get there, they think that they own. They own. Well, everywhere you see them, they think they own it. Yeah. Well, I mean, they cater to them like they're gods or something. I'm like, damn. You know, but you know, what can I say? I'm just really geared up for, you know, uh, Tanzania. So I'm, I'm, I'm doing something every day to get ready for that. Well, perfect. Have you seen all the highlights? Or some of them anyway, because we still got more. Yeah, I've seen some them. of them. Yeah, because I'm going to hopefully and too. really connect with your spirit. Right. Because it's, 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 you know, it's my literally featured tour. Yeah. 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 And then you know. It's not really a, a safari safari, but what I'm uh, want to tell everybody just for the recording, if they're looking to do the full safari packages, our you know our staff there they they can handle it for them. They can either do it at the beginning, before the, the tour commence, or they can do it at the end when the tour ends. Is it uh, your safari? Is your? No, I'm not. You are not catching me at no safari. I'm not oh. trying to get eaten by no lions. No, no. I mean that's one of the things I wanted to do, but I, when I did my research, yeah, research on on um. A lot of places in the southern region, they're all those safaris are all owned by white people, and the average price for one of those is thirteen thousand dollars. Well, it depends on the full length of journeys they do, and the ones that the, the guys have, uh, they'll take you to like the Serengeti and places like that. Yeah. And you know that's what they their company specialize in doing safaris. But you know we specialize in roots and culture tours, so it's a good connection to work with them. But. Um, but, I just, you know, just, it's just not my thing, uh, you know, I, I know. To go somewhere and just be on, you know, out with binoculars and look at animals. So what we do in uh, South Africa and uh, Tanzania is take you to the national park and the national park in, um, in Arusha is about an hour away, which is not bad. And we spend, a, you know, we spend a few hours around the national park, uh, take a break, uh, have lunch and then uh, finish up and then head back. Uh, so that's good for a one day, uh, you know, introduction. And it's the same thing in South Africa. Uh, and then, you know, so there's certain people know that they, if they want to do the full length of those things, we can get them to it. But the national park is nothing compared to us, you know, yeah. real life safari. But at the same time too, uh, just, I just, it just, it's not my thing. I just, I don't, maybe no, one day no, I'll get into no, it. I, I get it because when, the, when these people go on these tours down there, those cats can come right up to the truck. And in some cases they let the cats, like a cheetah get up in it. And that's a very dangerous thing that white people do. They try to humanize those animals, <laughs> and I, I'm not getting clawed. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's just um, I personally think it's dangerous, but some right. people feel like it's just another way of life, uh, right. and they're, they're into it. Like one of my favorite clip is when you know when this uh, white guy was literally just uh, you know he you know, he saw some lions and he wanted to get a closer shot. <laughs> Man, it tore to pieces. <laughs> So what's the transportation like in Tanzania? I mean, do you have, um, you don't have one of them buses like you had in uh, Ghana, right? Or do you? Um, what we've been using since the COVID protocol era is a Toyota Coaster. The Toyota Coaster can fit um, up to about, um, about up to almost 20 of us comfortable. And then you have the, uh, the racks at the top to put the luggage. So that's what we do in uh, Tanzania. So when, you know, and the, it's incredible how it's worked out because it's not like in Ghana where, you know, where the bus just takes you around the whole time. It's like in Tanzania, once we finish in Arusha, we got to get back to the airport in Kilimanjaro and then we're going to fly directly to Zanzibar Island. Once we get to Zanzibar Island, then we have a whole staff of people. As far as, we still have the one tour, we have one tour guide that travels the whole time, but then we have a Zanzibar tour guide and a, and a Zanzibar driver that takes us around. And then once we finish in Zanzibar Island, we're going to take the ferry boat 
a nice VIP uh, ferry boat ride. And that's the kind of, I was trying to do my best to show some highlights on the last uh, upload. We're going to take that ferry boat to Dar es Salaam. And once we get there now, we have another driver. And then we're going to use the same tour guide. It's just Zanzibar requires for you to hire one of their tour guides, which is, you know, definitely good because, you know, it's, 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 you know, it's, it's, it's one country, but they have, you know, I wish I could really just explain this good, uh, like, like Mali does, but uh, they have a, you know, they have their own separate government to a point and, and things like that. And they have a diff different ways that uh, they do uh, tourism. They just want to, you know, push more of their tour guides to do tours there. Uh, yeah. And so on. So that's, uh, that's the only time that we end up having two tour guides, but the Toyota Costa is what we pick up along the route. And then when we do Senegal and Gambia, we take uh, the, we drive from uh, Senegal all the way to Gambia and come back. Now the other option that I had is if we was able to work out a flight situation, we'll fly from Senegal to the Gambia, which, which is much better because we'll, you know, just be a smoother time. But the, but the way it's set up is our bus actually get there before the flight because right. the flight is end up being later. So we just end up just driving to the countryside because what I always want to show uh, our people is just how beautiful the African countryside look outside of the main cities. I mean, literally just beauty. All you see is this land, 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 and this beauty. You know, so it's like, that's what I'm telling people, focus on Africa so we can get into development because you, know, you have land in abundance yeah. and things like that. And then for the other countries, the same thing too. Um, uh, in, in South Africa, we, once we finish in Johannesburg, then we have another set, we have a different crew, uh, tour guides and drivers. So all these things, I'm telling people that, you literally have to plan these things out and it's not simple and easy and you have to trust a lot of people, but it's simple to trust people that you have great relationships with because everybody we do business with is people that we have known for a while and the people that we recruit, you know, it's usually just highly recommended and plus, you know, you interview everybody and everything and you're building long-term relationships. So it's been beautiful. Yeah, what's the exchange rate in Tanzania? Tanzania exchange rate. It is, um, I want to say it's 2000, for one for one U.S. dollars, it's two thousand three hundred Tanzania shillings, maybe more or less. I'd have to actually look it up. You got a currency converter, so you probably could tell us more. Yeah, yeah, I've got one on my phone. I just and uh, things like that. And then you know, countries like Ghana, inflation has gone up. So for one for one Ghana for one U.S. dollars, you used to able to get about five, five you know five point five, uh, you know Ghana CDs. Now it's like up to eight. So yeah. you know things like that. So. Yeah, that, that war going on has probably caused a lot of currency fluctuations throughout the continent. Now, they was hitting with uh, inflations uh, because they've made, ever since I left in December, a lot of crazy things have been going on in the country. So I'm hoping that they get it together uh, because, because right now, uh, South Africa, the exchange rate is still the same as when we left. Uh, it's um, for one US dollar, it is um, 13 um, uh, rand. Right. Okay. Well, more or less, because you know these things change. But I appreciate you, Juma. A family wants to want to see if anyone have any questions. Uh, you know, that way, me and Juma don't take up uh, all of the uh, conversations. I saw this, everyone is muted, so you have to unmute yourself. All right. So let me see if come, I can reach out to a come few. Come on, people. Rhonda. Rhonda's got a question. Come on, Rhonda. <laughs> uh, I do, I do. Can you introduce You know, I, I, I wondered what is the, um, you know, just keeping up with the current event. And um, I, I guess I have some concerns about, I know people have bought land in Ghana and various different parts of Africa, but um, a concern I'm having as I've done deeper research about the Chinese coming in. Right. You know, what is the deal with that? I mean, are, are people talking about that? A concern that they're trying to take over, especially in, is it Zanzibar? Is it, which, uh, which? The Chinese are taking over everywhere. And now uh, I want to let you finish so I can go into more details. But yeah, uh, um, no specific country, they're everywhere. They're like, they're like, mm -hmm. when we say New York City, like roaches. Yeah. They're everywhere. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know. That's just a, a concern I have. And my, I wanted to move to Africa, you know, and, um, but I'm just, I guess I'm just concerned about them taking over and taking over land and things like that. Well, the thing of it is we're safe nowhere because right now I'm dealing, with, I have a Mexican problem <laughs> and it's like, here in Georgia. 
Uh, and it's not really a problem. It's just <laughs> like a problem with problem. It's more <laughs> a problem with my, my black men here. Uh, oh. Because if they if they merge their energy together, they can compete. But that's what the yeah. issue that we're going to have. Uh, we're not going to compete because we're not thinking about corporate economics emerging. Uh, so even with uh, groups of Indians and um, uh, you know uh, Koreans and uh, Chinese, they literally you now they they basically and I would never knock their hustle. Um, and I've been to some of their countries uh, when I was in the Navy. They just they're very ambitious people, and they they believe in put, you know they have big populations and they'll put their money together. And the, the issue that that we're going to always face is that all those people are backed by our entire nation, the Lebanese, yeah. the Chinese, and you know, the Indians. Their entire their country support what they're doing, and we give them anything that they need to dominate. Uh, I even seen uh, the, the, the the Canadians have their hand now into the situation where they're buying up land. So when people hear me talking about land, they're like, "This guy Bomani is just obsessed with land." I was like, "Malcolm X educated us about land and the basis of independence." So that's why we're locking down what we can lock down, but. I just blame us as a people because you know we just sit here in America and we make our good salaries and we have our good life and then we won't take you know to make that move and I know it's a little rough and that's why people like myself is here to represent us in Africa like even the land right now that we have we have an office right there have people working on the land and have people living at the office our members and doing business there and people building their homes and things like that while I'm right here in Georgia working I have things going on and so you're trying to find different ways to keep the energy going. So I tell people whether they come here to this office or call me or they go to Ghana, you know, they'll be able to see all the things that we have in place. But then I realized that we're like the only set of people that's really building a true community. Um, and we actually paid for our land. We didn't go and just try to get some free land from some chief because and tell them that we were stolen because we want land in a specific area and we want a specific deal to where our contract or our lease is, is a clean sign and we don't have stipulations, no? Because we don't want no stipulation. We just want to make the deal. And then all of the things that we're going to do is going to be from the kindness of our heart to build in the community. But uh, since our people have not taken advantage of these opportunities, it creates an opportunity for those other nations. And so that's what mm -hmm. the Chinese are doing. So I'm basically telling people we're safe nowhere. And then, you know, my sister, uh, Sian, can tell you about, you know, our beautiful country of Jamaica, you know, and, um, and you know, and, you know, we, you know, so it's just critical that we just get involved in what's going on and build business. But our land is, uh, is fine in, um, in countries like Ghana. What's going to happen in the next uh, five to 10 years is when anyone else needs land, they can either come to me and get the little bit of land that we have left or they can go to the Chinese because that's who's going to own all the land. Because they're going to buy it. Where do you have land at? Uh, it's uh, in a location by Winneba, which is by Winneba, Winneba University, which is about an hour and a half to 90 minutes away from Accra and it's the same about I want to have 90 minutes away from Cape Coast Elmina and it's in a is small that, town. Um, is like is that like countryside because I'm interested in I like a brie you know the area like a brie and and out out in the, in mountain. the mountains uh, this is on the coast and we're right there about two miles away from the beach and the, the last 60 acres that we got to put us a little closer and then the next deal we're making is uh which is a little bit more expensive it's just getting access to the beach front uh, property. Uh, so I'm working on trying to get the chief to, to do his, uh, get the surveyor to do the, the research and, and then find out what they legally own in that area as far as the beach area. So we're gonna be looking to just bring more and more people to that area. That when I first went there, it wasn't, it wasn't nobody from America out in that area. I just like to consider myself a pioneer because I was looking at different areas and I was like, okay, what's the best place to where we can build a beautiful, you know, a, you know, a beautiful, you know, a beautiful city, a beautiful beach town, a beautiful industrial town, a beautiful uh, town with incredible communities of uh, mm -hmm. people from different parts of the, the African world, and you know, in a community where we, you know, we're in a cultural part of Ghana, where you know, where people are, you know, where you just have good people, um, and and that, and we found it after so many years of looking and things like that, and I put my best people on there, which is my attorney, my corporate attorney, and also my consultant, and. Um, I was able to get them work to work it out while I was right here. And I'm just, you know, and based on the networking we have, and we've been able to just go there a few times. Every time we have a tour to Ghana, that's a part of our tour. So on the website, you'll see Black Star Pan African Community. Once you click on it, it will give you just a whole lot of documentation, uh, videos, photos, and this information that you can be clear on. And then I can always send you a getting started email and you can just, you know, have access to the details and just process it. And uh, then we have, you know, we have all of our groups on like WhatsApp and then we have email, um, yeah, email lists and things like that. So hopefully that sounds good to you because that takes yeah. away from the mad city because if, 
if people keep on going to the city, it's gonna they're gonna go bankrupt because. I've had friends that tell me, like, yeah, my rent is five hundred dollars a month. I was like, you know, that's a lot of money, right? I was like, it's like, it's it's five hundred dollars a month. You're gonna get something in the hood where there's nothing but gang banging and crazy stuff going on. But in Ghana, that's gonna get you something nice. But you don't have to spend that amount of money. So I tell people that we don't have units built up like that on our physical property. But what we did was across the street from our property, a member of parliament was building a nice community. And you know, instead of us looking at it as competition, you know, we went over there and talked to them and say. We just want to support what they're doing and want to bring some of our members. We want to live for about six months to a year there. And then they can leave, they can leave every day and go back across the street to the land and build their home and things like that. So that has worked out good to where anyone that's ready to move, we can put them in like a three bedroom, two bathroom unit uh, for $2,000. That's your rent for the entire year. And then what you're going to be paying for water and electricity is probably less than $50 a month. Um, and you know, maybe even less than that, because sometimes people tell me the bill is about thirty dollars. I'm still trying to get an accurate bill of what we're paying uh, in the, you know, and because that's the unit that we have. And I'm telling, so people actually, two, I was like, yes, two thousand dollars a month. So I'm telling them like, if two people come together, they could their, their rent will be one thousand dollars for the entire year. And I mean, and this is a big house with a nice backyard and a front yard and things like that. The only difference I would tell them is that it's in an undeveloped town where we're developing. So you're telling people, if you're going to go somewhere develop, you're going to be looking at paying anywhere from six to $8,000 a month for your rent. And in Ghana, what they want is at least one year minimum. And some people are trying to price gouge and do, get two years for the rent. Uh, but even if people come together and split it, that will help. But being in the city, you also have to look at everything else that you're buying and paying for. It's just expensive. And out in, out in the rural area, our goal is to get back to what we, you know, what we grew up with learning. You plant all of your fruit trees around your, your, your community and then you do you do uh -huh. organic farming. You plant all your vegetables and everything. And then you cut the cost of living of you of your food, but also you have real food that's organic and not whatever. Because you know, you know, you go to a market, you go buy some food, you know, the mango look big and juicy, but is it really a real mango? And sometimes it's not. So that's the way of, that's the reason why we're acquiring all this land, the 15 plus the 60 acres and more and more. And, my goal is to acquire all of the land that's available in the area. And, and I know that's a little ambitious, but it's like, I'm telling people if our group don't do it, members and other groups that I'm talking about is gonna do it. So I'm trying to get other black groups in the diaspora to, to come on to where we do this together. But the issue is like, well, we were stolen and I don't feel comfortable buying no land. I'm paying no chiefs, no money. I was like, I was like, I don't know what to tell you. I was like, you can go get the free land, the 5,000 acres of free land that's in the Sable, but you know, Sable is not bad. It's over there by Cape Coast. And I just honestly don't want to live there. And I have no intent of being in that area because it's just, it's not appealing to me. What's yeah. appealing to me is that community that we live in where you just, you ride a bicycle or you, you know, you take your, you know, or you take, you know, take a nice little walk and then go down by the beach. Mm -hmm. And then it's a clean beach that we can. Yeah, because all the beaches are not clean. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and especially now since the COVID era, the beaches are not clean, but what we believe in, in is, you know, is just work parties. You come together and I'll be one of the first ones out there picking up anything. Me too. And cleaning up Me too. Because it's, 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 a, it's, it's a treasure to have a beautiful beach. Mm -hmm. when, we start building your, when we start building our yachts and everything, and, you know, we out there sipping on our own champagne and just chilling and enjoying life. You can just, you know, you can do that. Uh, so it's a lot of uh, benefits in that area. So I've been really trying to promote it. But when, when you tell people that's away from the city and you tell people that, there's no this there. And they were like, where's the gas station, the supermarket, all this stuff. I was like, you know what? You guys are asking for a lot. I was like, how about we go there and build it? Because I'm telling them that's the purpose of us getting the land in the first place. Mm -hmm. Now, do you have the, the, the biggest mall in West Africa is probably about 45 minutes away. And then you have, you know, you have places around there. And then the next city, Winneba, is the city that, you know, which is five minutes away. You can get what you need to get in that city. But, you know, if, you, if I'm, I'm looking at what I saw these uh, rich white groups of people do in this county, you know, even when the first time when I went to go sign for a house and, you know, they was going to build it from the ground up and then all I have to do is just sign for the lot and things. I got all those ideas from them. And it's just like, I was like, why can't we do this in my mind and things like that. And I realized that it's maybe a little trickier there, but, in, in, uh, in, you know, if you go into the African continent, you can acquire land for a very reasonable price and things like that. Um, I, um, so the land, uh, what's the name of the area that you said you're doing the building or you, you have the land? It's uh, Jahadzi, but what I can do is uh, if you want to text me, I can um, send you the email and the information. And then once you're on our website, uh, when you click on the link that say Black Star Pan-African Community, it will just open up. But 
It's uh, Jahadzi, and that's spelled G Y A A H A D Z E. Sometimes. G Y A. Uh, let me uh, even type it in chat. Uh, G Y A A for Ja and H A D Z E. And let me just. Um, is that land, <clears throat> is that ground, uh, fertile land good for growing? Oh yes, that's um, yeah, that's the only way I would get uh, land anywhere okay. uh, because we plan on growing everything. Uh, you know, this, uh, you know, plan on making it the Jamaica of Africa. Where you know, mm. meaning that you know, we go back to somewhere very cultural where people really believe in growing food trees and yes. that passionately. And um, is and, there a tax requirement by chief for the answer? Know, uh, no, there's no tax requirement. We uh we spend the money and, and made a deal and pay out for the you know it's it's not land that you buy. So every time I you know you use the word buy or purchase, they correct you and say lease. You know you say you know you made a deal for a lease, a 99 year lease. Uh, so uh, they're not just gonna outright just give out their land. It's uh, you're part of the community and it's a renewable lease. But what you're doing is you're putting something in place and you're letting your generations in the future understand that we did the foundation of this work. Now it's time. It's up to everyone to intermarry and do what they need to do so we can be one nation of African people without all these other titles that we call ourselves that keep us divided. So that's the goal. Uh, and that's why I feel comfortable doing it. But some people say certain things about the, 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 the lease thing and I'll tell them, well, you do have free old land, but good luck on trying to get some in the location that you want. Uh, and so, and if we're, so I feel perfectly fine with it, but some people may have their reserves. So sometimes I have to get our attorney on the call to explain things about the lease and how things work like that. But I don't think it's any different from how it works here because I can almost sure when, it, when we look at our lease paperwork here or our or paperwork here, it has certain stipulations and things like that. And uh, tell the people, uh, you know, tell the people that, to, that, that used to live around Atlanta airport that don't live around here anymore because they needed that land for the airport and they're not gonna say, they're not gonna accept no. You know, whatever it means to get you off the land, whether paying you off or removing you, they're gonna remove you and build their airport. Uh, so that's the situation in America. And the same thing when they're building the Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Not everybody agreed to give up their property, but they made them offers they couldn't refuse. Mm -hmm. And then if you don't take those offers, then, then there may be something else. But regardless, they were going to build that stadium. They, they take it. <laughs> it's called imminent, imminent domain. Yeah. So, so definitely, Rhonda, I'm trying to see if... Um, Sometimes I don't remember everyone who I have contact information from, but I'm sure we have spoken, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so. I think the last conversation uh, we had was, I was asking if they were still requiring vaccination at the airport coming and going uh, out yes. of Ghana. Uh, they're definitely, um, some people said they have been able to go to the country and no one checks it, but based on the situation that we have, um, when, when, when I went in December, I went to, on United, they check me and my sons at Atlanta, at Washington, Dulles. They check us when we get to the Ghana entry port. And then when we're leaving, they check it twice in the line. So that was five times. Mm -hmm. And some other people have told me different stories, but you don't want to, you, you don't ever want to give people bad advice. So I go right. specifically by the travel mandate and the travel advisory. Mm -hmm. And until they change that, then we just have to deal with that for now. But uh, they, they won't have a choice. They're going to, they, you know, we have too much strategies for them to keep up what they're doing. Yeah. Unless they really want to see their, you know, the great tourism that was built during the 2019 year return and before just mm -hmm. completely fall apart for them because just like South Africa thought they had it like that. And then next thing you know, we're in Tanzania. <laughs> yeah. So perfect. So uh, Teresa, Johan, anyone um, before we close out and stuff, you want to say anything, introduce yourself, connect with us. All right, we have a lot of people being shy tonight. Well, I have another question. Okay, go ahead and there we go. Uh, yeah, yeah. Jim, Juma got me started. <laughs> right. um, you probably covered it already. And I know you said there's a lot of information on the site, which I haven't been in a while. All right. But um, is it, do you have, um, situations where you work with people on paying for the land that they may choose or you require an upfront payment for the property and in, in, in a whole 
Now everything that we do is a payment plan. Everything we do is payment plan, uh, and you know people put a deposit down and and, and pace themselves and things like that. So that's why we have everything set up for all of the tours and investment. Mm -hmm. So usually, you know, when we communicate and we just finalize and whatever, you know, you just let people know that they have those options. And how is the person secure? I mean, and I mean, legally wise, I mean, we hear all kind of stories, you know, where people have been in place like you are to help people with buying land and it was a fail. So how do we, how, how are we secure in that? How do we can be confident in that? Absolutely. Um, well, I've been around a lot of failures and you learn from failures. So I've been around groups like Garvey Town, Fiancra, and uh, other people that wanted to do communities. And I specifically worked with them to learn uh, on what not to do. And so that's what we've been able to do. So what we have is I have a whole group of attorneys and, and consultants and business people and some of my best guys in the country. And, uh, you know, you make sure that you, you know, you do all your the legal work that you have. Make sure you get all your legal paperwork. Make sure everybody that's a part of that deal, make sure you, you know, as far as the lawyer, make sure that he's a corporate lawyer and he has an office, make sure that everything is signed and stamped by the Lands Commission, the courts of Ghana. So that's what I do on the, uh, the website and the email that I sent. I show people and we're the only people that I know that, you know, that will literally show you all of this paperwork and show you and everything is consistent. Black Star Pan-African community. We have our incorporation with our board members on it and things like that. Uh, and, and literally we have people living on the land, building on the land. And it's been two and a half years since we acquired the land. But it's something that you have to put time into. Some people, they, what they want to do is they want to just, they will take the bait and go and, and, and pay for something cheap. Sometimes you just have to pay for the, the land. And then what they won't pay for, they won't pay for all these people I mentioned to you, attorneys and consultants. That's mm -hmm. why we, you know, we, um, you know, that's why part of the cost is administrative costs. And that's mm -hmm. some of the money we use to pay our staff and keep, you know, you know and keep our lawyers nice, fat and happy and then make them do their job and make sure they hold uh, everyone accountable. So that's what we've been able to pull off. And it's, it's rough for some people. Some people have not been able to pull that off, but at the end of the day, people have to take accountability for their mistakes and their bad decision. And that's the difference between what I'm building and what other people have failed to do. Uh, and I've been a student of this whole movement since now, I was in my mid twenties. And part of that was to learn how the land situation work so even when I work with other groups and I was giving them advice and telling them certain things, they was like, who's this young boy telling me what to do? And I was like, okay. I was like, okay, I'll, I'll, just, I'll just keep on bringing people and just trying to do other things for you. But, you know, and then you also have to just make sure you have to just cover every single base of what you're doing. And that's what we are doing. So I tell people, they can just watch us for the next few years and all they're going to see is just us building, building, and building because we have done those uh, work. And, and then if other, when you talk to other people, they're going to tell you that they didn't do this, they didn't do this, they didn't do this. If they, if they actually can, you know, can come out their pride and just be honest with you. And because mm -hmm. and I know a lot of them and they, you know, instead of them joining with us, they're like, okay, these people are talking about applications and this and that. I'm going to go with this group. I can just get land for $500. I was like, well, you fell for the bait. You can't, mm -hmm. no, land is not that cheap. Mm -hmm. and, and so on. So, you know, you have a... Um, you have a group, uh, I, wanna, I don't want to call their, their name. Um, it's a Ghanaian group and they just, they've, they've gotten a lot of our people. So they're in courts right now with a lot of people mm -hmm. and things like that. And what they're going to do is they're going to drag out the court cases and play games with you and things like yeah, that. Yeah, I've heard that. Yeah, so I tell people, and, and that, those things have caused me trouble also because when you're in the, you know, when you're in the, you know, the ocean full of you know, sharks and everything, everybody that's going to think that you're just that way, just like everybody else. And that's the, the the thing that hurts you the most because I'm telling people that these people you make are come bad lately. for everybody. Yeah, they come, they're Johnny come lately, and they're people that's not business and scientific people like myself that that put the work into getting things done and organize organize. And that's what I mentioned to you. We have an office there, we have an office here. Uh, we have the chief. You know, I've been to his house a few times. You go right up to his house, and he's not a crazy person to, to think that he can just do this kind of stuff and just live there peaceful and free. And then have me come to his house and hang out with him and then turn around and do what he does. Or the attorney showing his credentials and signing off on so many, so many things and think he can get away with. So even what I did, I even went even further. I hired another attorney and I just basically sold him, sold him some lies and told him that, that you know, I don't trust the people that I'm working with, which I trust them with my life. And then so he's like, okay, but my name, I'll make sure that they don't get you. <laughs> so after he went through everything, he was like, he was like everything is as legit and real as possible. Uh, so, What's the chief's name? 
Uh, his name is Nana Haiti, uh, and he's the chief of Jahadzi uh, in the central region. Nana Haiti. Yeah, so once you click on Black Star Pan-African Community, we'll have mm -hmm. a series of 100 plus videos. If you go all the way back to 2019 on the videos, then you'll see himself, his whole family is, uh, is, is board members on many videos, and we just, we just interviewing people. Now, if someone hesitate once about me recording them, then there's an issue. Because if we're in, I'll tell everybody, if we're in this That's together, scary. you have to show your whole life. It's like I showed That's my whole scary. life. People see me travel with my son from it was youth all the way up from two years old all the way up to now. So that's one of the ways we've been able to let people know to do their research and we're showing you full transparency. And, and then I tell people, unfortunately, I'm in the same world as all the other people that's doing a bunch of crazy stuff, but you know, and even been accused of doing stuff. So I tell people, accuse me of what you want to accuse me, but proving it is a whole different world. Go to the Lands Commission, go to the people who do the incorporation, go to the courts of Ghana who sign and stamp all of our documents. And, and ask them if they are fraudulent because at the end of the day, you're accusing them of not doing their job. And I tell, and then even one person accused me of, of say, yeah, Bomani, you did all the paperwork. He doesn't have all the paperwork, but he forged all of it. And I was here rolling with, I had some of my friends over here and we were just rolling. It was like, these people are crazy. And I was like, how do you forge these paperwork? And I was like, I tell people, if you're concerned, go look the stuff up and then you'll see. So you're also providing people with enough documentation for them to do their own research. So, yeah, so again, I'm telling people, don't make any commitments to anybody for anything without doing your proper research and make sure that they show you full transparency because if not, then I'm telling people that's the situation that's going to happen. You know, because because when you live in a certain life, there's only so much you can fake. You know, like some people say fake it until you make it. You can't fake you can't fake what we're doing. You know, like you can't fake this dedication of things that we're doing and the, 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 the corporate setup that we you know, some people made us be like, there's no way this person can do it because they look at you and they just, you know, they just judge you by how you look and things like that. And I was like, I was like, you can, whatever you want to judge me by how I look, I'm a person that's well educated from military educated, technology educated, business educated, and very educated about how culture and business work in Africa. And I keep an entourage of people with me to make sure that you know we roll strong. Uh, so that's the difference between what we're doing and everyone else. But if people don't do their research, they'll basically say, oh, Bomani is the same as the rest of them. He's just more polished. Or something like that. Uh, but I tell people that go and talk to the couple that you know, the couple that built the first house on the property. They call me from Alabama in 2019 and say they, they're tired of America and they just want to go to Africa. And I said, well, just come on a journey with me and we have business conference and we'll just plug you into everything we have. And then when they came, they was on a journey. I was like, we love Ghana. We want to move here. I was like, okay, well, we're, we're trying to finalize the deal on the land because at that point they only saw the land in this virgin stage where. When I took people and they was like, what is, what is Bomani showing? I was like, there's like, there's like, there's nothing here. I was like, absolutely. I was like, there's nothing, it's just land. I was like, but I was like, the community center is gonna be there, the business center, all of these are gonna be nice houses and everything. And they just looking at me like it's strange. And I tell them that this is the foundation of what I've seen everyone else do outside of us. And, and then two years later, they're living on the land, they got a finished home. And they always tell me that nobody bothers them and they live in peace. Now, do you provide the contractors or can we find our own builders? Uh, people can provide their own builders. And what I was doing uh, based on learning from all the mistakes that Garvey Town made is we didn't have any stipulations. If somebody wanted to build a two floor house and a garage, they can do that because that's the issue that this one other group had. And I told them, I told them, I was like, I was like, you guys are going to commit suicide doing this. I was like, you know, I'm, it's your project and I'm just working with you, but I'm here to also advise you because these are my customers and these are also but people that trust me and people who I know what they want, because some of us live here in Georgia and we just like the houses that we've been living in, you know, two floor house with a garage, driveway and backyard and things like that. And they're telling us that we got to park down the street. I was like, there's nothing on your map that say park down the street. And you didn't tell us this up front until you took our money and things like that. So they had, any, they had big tr issues with me. And I'm one of the people, once you come against me, I'm going to shut you down because now you have betrayed a trust of brotherhood and sisterhood and, and nationhood and things like that. Uh, so I just learned from what they were doing, and I told people the best thing we can do right now is to just go get our own land, and we're going to write our own bylaws, write our own everything, and we're going to let everybody know these are the situations up front. Don't send any money until you read it and you're clear on it, because you know we want to respect our own people as, as the fact that we respect you enough to where we want to give you information up front without you know, saying, give me, give me, give me this money or pay this, pay this, which when people start doing that, that's like triple X's right there. Just don't do anything with them because that means that something is definitely wrong. And, and if they can't provide you with certain things, you know, 
these lands are owned by chiefs, so we need to know who the chief is, whose mother is, whose father is, where, where, where this came from and things like that. So that's what we have learned to do from then. So with the builders, we have our own builders, but what they were trying to do was trying to force us to use their buildings and use their building plans, which is like one floor bungalow with no garage. And I was like, I'm not living in that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So anyone can build the house that they need. And it's not a situation where five floor plans, which some people advised me, go get five floor plans or six floor plans. I was like, you just think I'm a machine, right? I'm supposed to just do all this stuff. So I told them that we have a few builders, individuals can talk with them, but if they find a, a builder that works better for them, they can be there, they can use that builder. And also our friends that they're gonna, they, you know, they, they used to build in homes. So they're gonna be there building their own homes. Uh, so I mean, what I mean, we have the flexibility to just make things happen. And even what Garvey Town was talking about, they were saying that, you know, they don't want nobody to come there and build mansions and things like that. I was like, let somebody come in tell me they want to build a mansion. I'm like, hey, you can't just build it in the front of the here, but trust me, I got a nice location on the side or the back for you to build. Just like mm -hmm. I'll see communities mm -hmm. here in America to where you go, in, you go into the community and it's the, the one floor homes, then the two floor homes, and then you have the, the mansions of three floor homes and bigger uh, further back. So just trying to do those things organized so where you can accommodate different people. And then on the second phase of the property, um, some of us can put our money together and actually build apartments and then we can just, just, just work it to where, you know, this person, that's your apartment, or you can just call it a condo, if you want to call it, and work it out to where now you have a two bedroom, one bathroom unit in a, in, a, in a big building with other people. And, you know, maybe that works for you, but it will cut the cost of how some people want to live. And even if somebody want, want a one bedroom, one bathroom unit, and they can also work with other developers to say, hey, Let's come together and build these units, and then we'll put some upfront money of ten or fifteen thousand dollars to invest in it, and then you know we can pay the balance of the unit uh, when you're finished. Now there's different ideas, so that what we created is something to where you have 100% flexible options and things like that. The only thing I tell people is that uh, you know what we have is, is 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 organized and strict to where we don't you know we won't let a bunch of foolishness goes on because then that affects the serious black people that we have coming. So we're trying to protect people in all phase and aspects of things and make sure we uh, provide security and things like that. Go ahead. I, um, when I was looking at the apartment and looking at maybe getting an apartment that I could be able to rent out as a source of income, I noticed also as I was looking around that some are incorporating HOA fees. Are you also doing that? Uh, yes, but our HOA fees is $25 a month. It's $300 a year. So what that pays for, uh, that pays for, uh, we have administration cool there in, um, in Ghana on the land, but also it pays for landscaping, it pays for uh, security, maintenance, and things like that. Uh, so those are the things that it covers. Uh, so that's $300 uh, a year. Um, some people told me that's not enough. And I tell them, well, we just, you know, we, we're not trying to do something to where you're just going to discourage people. Because people have told me that, that's what they pay per month. I think that's what people have said that they pay usually here and things like that. But that's the, the main purpose of that is to cover the cost of those other things that you need. And how often are those going up? Um, no, it's not going up. It's uh, $25 a month. Oh, it's $25 a month. And, and, and the land is like, huh? Is that stipulated in contract that it's not going up? No, we don't have it stipulated in the contract. I'd have to, I, I didn't write the bylaws. My uh, bylaws group uh, wrote it. Um, and I don't remember seeing anything as far as that going up. We, because we're here, kinda... here in America, <laughs> you don't pay your HOA fees. They put you out of your own place. And I'm yeah. not working so hard to, to have that happen <laughs> uh, far across the waters. You know what I mean? Yeah, we can definitely put those things in writing for you um, and things like that. But uh, the goal is not to change those things. And even the people are trying to say, you know, especially it comes from people who you know weren't really committed to what we're doing, saying, it should be more than that. I was, I was telling them, I was like, mm -hmm. HOA fee is different from, you know, different from a development cost. If we decide that we are going to put money together to do a certain development in the community, then we, that's also, that's another cost that we have to agree on. But what I've um, learned that we can do and, you know, what Juma mentioned earlier is, you know, different ways to get your reparations money from America and use that to build the things that you need to build. Uh, so I've been talking with a lot of people that's been educating me on different ways how we can use build our nonprofit and use the use the programs that we have for because what we're building also is is for the children there and I mean the community and business center that's where they're going to be, be able to do certain things and 
it's uh, also a leverage to this, let the people in the community know that we're just not coming to this build beautiful homes and we're gonna forget about our children and things like that. And so, yeah, I do understand people have a lot of worries and things like that, but um, we try to be as flexible as possible and work things out. But, you know, we'll, we're, we're doing our things in a community setting to where, say example, you're there in the property and you need to go to America and you need to leave your belongings and your family and then you need to go take care of an emergency. You know, we're there to look out for each other because at any moment, any of those things can happen to any of us where we need to make a move. And then for those, maybe the, the money is short, you know, we'll put it together because the goal is to also, you know, build your own, um, you know, credit union and also use some of our, our, our basic profits to buy, my, which is my favorite investment, which is treasury bills, stocks and bonds and fixed deposit there in Ghana. Um, I've tested out a few markets and, you know, the returns are nice. Because uh, the, the interest rate is higher because you're in a developing country and you know it's growing, so you know it's working good. So all of those things that we're going to be doing is going to give us a level of flexibility to where you, you know what you're ultimately looking to do is creating generational wealth for all of the families that's involved. To where you know we can literally just make our money work for ourselves versus what we you know end up having to do here, where it just you know if you don't invest it, it goes back to the system one way or another. Okay, one more question for now. Sure. Oh, it's all good. Um, <laughs> do you have properties where uh, HOA fees are not? Because I really want to be free from that. Yeah, um, the, the, we only have 15 and 60 acres, uh, and that's what we have set up because, you know, also when we think about uh, the additional land that we have for commercial, we have some, we have certain buildings that it's no cost to the building. We just need us as a group to work on a medical center medical slash dental center, then you have business slash community center, and you also have maintenance building, which is you know one of the things that you know, being a technician, I learned that uh, in Ghana maintenance is not big, but you know we look at maintenance at a very high level to where you need a building that takes your maintenance, whether it's ground maintenance, vehicle maintenance, and things like that. Uh, but but if you know we need to put certain things in writing for you, I'm always more than welcome, willing to do those things because I don't want to, and that's why we just don't have these stipulations of who you have to build with, what you have to build and all that stuff. Because honestly, by the time you turn around, you don't lose everybody. And that's what I told Garvey Town was gonna happen. And they turn around, they lost everybody. Mm. You know, cause they were acting like they were like the black version of the white oppressors in, in the UK. Mm. So they're, they're a group of uh, hard headed British people. And then mm. the only hard for thing is that some of them were actually from Jamaica. That was like, I was like, what kind of Jamaican people are you? <laughs> oh, I know who you're talking about, okay. Yeah, yeah uh, the, the fake prophet Kwaku and uh, yes. and, 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 and Madman Garadina. What a Garadina. disaster. <laughs> that was so, that's, that's embarrassing. <laughs> I remember watching his interview when he was with the chief and he was talking about building, you know, upon his initial coming in. Oh, what a mess. Yeah, because what I told him is that I was like, you, I was like, I got you guys. I was like, you know me, I record everything. So I was like, this is you guys' conversation telling us one thing. And this is your conversation tells us another thing. And that's why I tell people we record everything. And I tell people, even have to check myself because I have to, you know, because you're always talking and you have to be consistent. And when you're not, Mr. Bomani Dakari, come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here, come here please. <laughs> He's running, but you can see him in the camera in the background. Say hello to everybody. You don't want to I tell them if you want to get a pay raise, you have to be more social. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, it's but the thing of it is, uh, we all we all have to learn from these situations, uh, and that's time go along from, you know, from the great Marcus Garvey to to now. You know, we've seen a, a situation where we can learn from, and you know, and 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 it's just that's that's the situation. So I've been in a privileged situation to learn from everyone before me, mm -hmm. and working with Garvey Town was one of the greatest. Um, learning lesson because it literally taught you what not to do and so now by the time I turn around we're doing better than they're doing and they're basically out of business <clears throat> I'll let somebody else have a yeah so perfect so you and I would just have some uh, direct conversation uh, on the phone and we'll just talk more about it and everything and I'll do my best to accommodate you and make sure that you know you're good to go okay all right so family before we close I just want to know if anybody else have any questions uh I see some smiling faces, but uh, it is, uh, it's just their profile photos. <laughs> One last comment though. Oh, sure, go ahead. I hope that um, 
that in your next trips or future trips to Ghana, that you might be able to add Steve Coakley's place on um, on your itinerary. He's built a, um, I guess it's like a, something similar, not something similar to what Jerry Johnson has in Ghana, right. but it's an educational place, a, a black think tank is what he calls it. He says it's near the Cape Coast. Perfect. You know, I'm always down for that. And that's, uh, I've known uh, Jerry Johnson for a while. And when he told me he had a memorial, well, I was like, brother, we added that to that itinerary. <laughs> <clears throat> Because what you're trying to do in this program that we built, as far as the, the, the whole uh, tour, repatriation and connection, you want to highlight your brothers and sisters from the African diaspora, the work that they're doing. Because I feel like we know, we're, you know, we don't get enough credit on the African continent. We have a lot of people that have done great stuff. You've been to One Africa with me, and you know, Amicus, uh, Shabazz, One Africa, they've been there. I'm, every time I've been to Ghana, I've been there every single time from 2006 to now. And they've been just very supportive on what we're doing. And also, you know, right there is a nice little connection. Uh, so whatever we can, you know, we can find uh, that represent our people from the diaspora to show a strong emphasis. And then, you know, when you're from the diaspora and you're coming there, it's, you know, it's very inspirational to see other people from the diaspora who have moved and do well for themselves there in the different uh, countries. So absolutely. So even if you can send me some information on it um, and, and I don't have his number or anything, and I'm open to calling him and talking with him and checking out what he has. It's, or, not, it's not really new, man. Just Steve Coakley. All you got to do is Google it. He'll pop up. Steve yeah. what? Steve Coakley. Yeah, Coakley. Not, every, not everybody numbers come up like yeah. that online. You know, my, my stuff come up because I just put them out there publicly like that. But uh, yeah, I, I, but yeah, I do know uh, Yeah, Steve Coakley Jr., right? Yeah, Steve Coakley Jr., yeah. Yes. Yeah. So a uh, few other people have mentioned that, uh, but uh, I'll see what we can do and what uh, we can do to get uh, information to check it out because, you know, uh, my whole goal for this whole repatriation movement is to connect all of us together on the African continent and keep us connected in the diaspora because I feel like that's the biggest mistake that we have made. Like people have literally told me that they're going, you know, that they're not moving with us because they're going to go live with the people. And I was like, well, we're not people. I was like, what people are you going to live with? <laughs> and I, I know what they mean. They're talking about living in the middle of a community full of people from Ghana and things like that. And I was like, are you sure you want to do that? Because we have a community and everyone else around us is all Ghanaians. And things like that but the difference is that we have a connected energy to where it gives you leverage now if you come by yourself and you're just solo and wherever i'm um, trust me people have no idea the amount of trouble they go they run themselves into like i have one of my jamaican brothers that built out in the volta region every time he left to go to new york back he came back everything was gone right and then he and then he, he kept on doing it and until he until nothing was left he kept on leaving and coming back and he was and he was giving a presentation i was like how are you smiling and someone I was like, that's a, that's a real personal stuff. You know, no, that's like a violation. Right? You know, you have your home, you know, and you know, things can be replaced, but that's not the point. It's like, you're violating my life. Right. And that's why, you know, when I tell people that we are securing our boundaries and securing ourselves and, and you know, telling people that's what it is, you know, because even though you may have a whole lot of people that's down with you and feel you and, and like you and everything, but you have to think about the people that's in every single country in the world that are looking for you as an opportunity, you know, whether they look at you as a walking dollar bill or somebody that you could, they can just victimize, you know, sit there and plan out to see when you leave, who you're moving with, and then do intel or even send one of their best ladies over there to, to you know, fall in love with you. And then never, next thing you know, you know, somebody's giving you, you know, some poison or something like that. Like, I'm being honest, these things do happen. I'm not just like putting it out there like, That's what people are going to do to you? Because no, I mean, Ghana, Ghana is one of those countries where, you know, you move somewhere, you're fine for the most part. But, but at the same time, too, and even though I was watching this one video uh, with a uh, native born, and they were saying that when they were sleeping, somebody crawled through their bathroom window. And I'm like, I'm like, home. I'm, I'm like, I remember I'm, that. And I'm like, I'm like, home. I'm like, 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 you know, we have security and we don't play those kind of games, you know, you know, and things like that. So, you know, people have to think about what they really want to do. Like, I would never leave here from my, the people, the same people that I struggle with all my life. My black folks in the diaspora say, I'm going to, you know, I'm tired of you people. I'm just going to go somewhere in Africa and get away from you. That's, I mean, that's just so disrespectful. Your people that you have built a struggle with are going to always be your best protector. And just like, you know, those of us from the diaspora here that's going to Africa, you know, we're our best support system because if something goes wrong for you in Ghana, who are you going to really go to other than the American embassy? You, the American embassy is always 
your last resort. And it's very embarrassing going and telling that you don't have anything left and you just need them to help you get a ticket so you can go back. I've had a few friends yeah. do that. And you're black going to the American embassy. Oh, yeah, and more embarrassing. Because <laughs> they're going to look at you like, we just, Negro, white people. Yeah. They, they'll, they'll still help you. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't. I just don't think the people, I think that, I don't think that African-Americans a lot of times that, who think about going there by themselves, they don't understand the level of desperation there. They're, um, right. Africa has been seriously underdeveloped. The colonial powers went in there. They took and gave nothing, nothing. And, you know, when I think about the continent, I just hope that it doesn't become a a replica of what we have here with 7-Elevens on and, and different corporations on, because now they truly will be slaves, right? Mm -hmm. So we can go there to create a whole different type of um, social and economic paradigm that is not based on absolute and total greed. You know what I mean? You know, so, you know, it's just like when I was in uh, Gambia with you, man, I mean, it tore my heart apart when we went, took that beach, um, tour and the people came up to uh, our vehicle and with their babies in their hand and I wanted to give everything in my, in my hand but I, I knew I couldn't because it wasn't going to help you know so they need us to come there with a different mindset and not a mindset to rape pillage and plunder that desperation there is just something like uh, well you see it here like in LA on Skid Row but basically nothing nothing it doesn't compare it doesn't compare because um, the homeless here can get free houses and free food and free clothes and, and not want to do a damn thing. But these people have, our people there have nothing to depend on. Yeah. They have to get up every day. And if they get, get one meal, you know, they consider themselves blessed. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it, if they, if they, if they catch one of us slipping, it's nothing really personal. I don't believe it's just that you just didn't really understand the level of desperation there. Yes, brother, it's uh, serious stuff, serious stuff, yeah. uh, serious stuff. Um, and, and that's why I'm trying to get more of us to connect and work together and everything. You waving at somebody? I was just saying goodbye. You saying goodbye? <laughs> All right, well, awesome. perfect. Uh, Juma and everyone else, appreciate the energy. Uh, anyone else want to share anything before we close out? Um, I know we've been on a little longer than usual, but uh, appreciate, the, appreciate the, the conversation of us, us talking as a people about these important things of us connecting together and looking out for each other and us just, you know, really just structuring ourselves. So when we represent ourselves on the African continent, we can represent ourselves as a unit, which will make us much stronger and go a lot further and protect our interests versus the individuals that get picked off. It's kind of like going out there to the jungle, the lions is picking you off little by little. I got a question. Sure. Um, have you ever had anybody get sick from malaria on your trip? And what was the remedy? I can't say directly, uh, but the, when people follow our, our protocol, they're good, but usually not in the country long enough to get malaria. But do we mm -hmm. have people get malaria? Uh, yes, yeah, so uh, the remedy is natural medicine, and also we have natural health practitioners and we have people there in the country. And that's why I depend on my folks on the diaspora that repatriate there because now they can say that, hey, these are something that they're familiar with and then they provide certain help. Like I was talking about One Africa Resort in Elmina. Uh, that's where I have some of my best people with health and wellness. You go there and that's in the middle of the tour. So anything happened, you're close by to that part of the journey to where they're just take care of you because it's also a health resort. So that's where we'll have- Elmina? Uh, that's Elmina. Elmina. Uh, right by it's our, a health uh, resort. Uh, yes, and it's called One Africa Resort, and it's. Oh, uh, I want to. I want to move there. <laughs> well, it's um, it's a, it's a, it's it's not a place to live, but it's a, it's it's a hotel. But uh, that's, you can live that's in that my area. passion. You you can uh, live in that area, and you know even where where we're living on and the property we're building, all of that is has to do with health and wellness. Because what we're doing is getting back to the the science of this health and wellness. That's right. So we're getting away from eating all kind of junk and heavy mm -hmm. food. So even on the farming that we're building, I think the most may have is just some chicken. So those who eat chicken and things like that, but mm -hmm. we're not going around this stuffing ourselves because the goal is to help live a healthier life. So yes. that's what we're talking about growing everything. So you go back to more of a plant-based diet. And I'm also telling people that I'm not here to tell you how, what to do with your life and how to eat and everything. But so if they want to go get their, their you know, their, their steak and whatever, you know, it's up to them to go figure that out. But
but what's what's provided is healthy and Plant based more stuff. Yeah, healthy stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, that's gonna make you you know strong and all the issues that we have when we start getting a little older in our forties, fifties, and sixties, you won't so much have those issues now because now you have you know you live in a tropical cultural environment and also the water that you're getting is you're you're basically providing your own water so we, we have a beautiful catch water system to mm -hmm. where the water gets channeled down from your roof into an underground tank and it's built with pump and filter system and then you can have enough water for unlimited water for anywhere from uh, three to six months at a time or longer based on how big it build your tank and then you talk about Ghana a country where it always rains yeah do they teach at the Health Resort, Armenia. In Armenia. Uh, yes, uh, I'm a Chris and um, Shabazz. They do certain classes and things like that. But also, we have other people that you know, go into different uh, classes. But I would have to find that out directly. Okay. All right, perfect. The next person have any questions is unmute yourself if you want to share anything before we close. And all right, so if nobody else have anything to share or say, um, Sion, you have something to say or share? No, just um, keep up the good work because I know it's hard and it's similar to Jamaica, what you're doing, because if you ever buy land, it's the same process. It's like build up the British system. So you just keep up the good work and be encouraged because I know it's a lot of work. And you're dealing with a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And different yeah. personalities. <laughs> yes, yes. Mm -hmm. so it takes patience. So I know we are behind you. We know what you're doing. And it's it's a good thing. I appreciate you. And um, I just don't want my family to uh, struggle from with us how we have to make a move to America and then work hard for 30 plus years and then end up just having nothing to pass it on to our generations. Mm -hmm. uh, so... And then also this, um, you, know, you know, we want to make sure that Marcus Garvey didn't, didn't you know, sacrifice everything uh, in vain because he's the one that had this great idea of how uh, we can build Black power and connect to Africa and just represent our own, you know, our own interests as a people. And then all the other great uh, energy before and after him that have this, you know, sacrificed for us. So, you know, us in this generation, we have to find some of us have to be willing to just make that sacrifice and I have the best experience in Africa. So this, you know, like they always say the next person up and that's, uh, and that's us. So, so far so good. And uh, it's, um, everything is working out well because um, people have shown interest and things like that. And we, you know, um, outside of the haters, you have a lot of people that support energy. And, you know, even with the haters, they're, they're my greatest motivator. I love it, man. I tell them, keep on saying crazy stuff. All you're gonna <laughs> do is get up and make me just work harder and make mm -hmm. me just connect and build a stronger relationship with people. <laughs> what um can I ask um Fion, Fion uh -huh. from Jamaica? Yes. Um, because it's always been a place I've always wanted to go and even possibly live. I like the tropical setting. Um, but when I was planning on taking a trip, my sister told me a couple of years back, don't go because it was so much trouble. Is there a particular place you would recommend? Um, when I traveled during 2019, I stayed in Ocho Reyes or Montego Bay. Those are the two Montego Bay. Yes. Bay. Yes. And the other or, one is? Um, um, Ochi Reyes. Ochi. Yeah. Reyes. Yes. And I stayed at the... Um, it's a Spanish um, hotel, the uh, mm -hmm. Rio, uh, Rio, Rio, okay. Rio, 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 yes. money, 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 money. <laughs> no, the thing is, I didn't have to spend no money because when I stay with the American uh, hotels, um, you have to pay money if you want to go to a, um, like a Chinese restaurant or Italian restaurant, you spend extra money, but there yeah. everything you, in your room, they give you like, water, like big bottles of water every mm -hmm. day. Nice. So you don't have all those stuff so the yeah. only thing money for is my day trip to go yes. like see but yeah. it's pretty um it's pretty secure safe mm -hmm. and you have fun you have a lot of entertainment i didn't want to leave that's so yeah. much fun i'm from kingston but yeah i don't have 
want to stay with when I go to Kingston. So I have to stay in Ocherius and then drive all the way, like 45 minutes. Yes. Into the yes. So it's, it's um, if you stay within a certain radius, you're fine. Okay. Yeah. And now yes. right now there are other issues going on, like everywhere else, you know. Yeah, all yes. over the world, Bible prophecies. Yes, because my yeah. sister's planning to go back sometime this year with our family. Mm -hmm. But um, unfortunately, I can't go because I have other commitments. So, but I would love yeah. to go. And well, you hope, have you can, hope you can make it back soon. Yes, yeah. I, I think I'm on the four-year or five-year plan. <laughs> <laughs> Well, at least you got a plan. <laughs> I spent a lot of money because you still have family there. So, you know, you have to yeah. give what you can and yes. plan for it. We have to plan. You we know, have far to plan. Yeah. That's so, right. But it, it's a lot of fun, trust me, you know. I bet it is. It looks like it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> in Brooklyn. So, um, Brooklyn, New York, and I grew up around a lot of African um uh Jamaicans and I just missed it I live here in Colorado now oh, but okay. I, miss, I missed the personalities this one it was I just miss it yes so I always say if I marry again I know he's going to be from the island somewhere <laughs> <laughs> yeah. absolutely yes absolutely. Right. That's beautiful. Yeah. um uh, Bomi I want to know Tanzania. Um, they're not, are they still, is, if you know, if they still, because my concern is about being vaccinated. I don't choose to be uh, vaccinated. Do you know if Tanzania is still um, open where they're not forcing that? No, there's no, the only country I mentioned that there's a vaccination mandate is done on our schedule. All the other five countries does not require it. And does then, not. Okay. There's okay. only two countries that require you to take a... a, a Rwanda. PCR, sorry, the, that only other, there's only two countries that require you to take a, um, take a, a, P, take a, a COVID-19 rapid test. And that's uh, Tanzania for $10 and Ghana for $150. It's the same test. So outside of that... Uh, there's no, um, outside of that, the, those are the only uh, stipulations of that, but Tanzania, uh, no vax mandate, and you can just go in and out the country. Uh, okay. It's one of the simplest mm -hmm. countries to go in and out of for no problem. I see, okay. That's good to know. And then see, I'm a Tanzania uh, shirt on. I know, I said, he's got the Tanzania <laughs> shirt on. <laughs> and I got my first journey uh, Tanzania uh, shirt back there uh, in the background, and is this a country I'm just happy that um, that things didn't work out in South Africa that year, and I end up just because I don't know if I would ever even went to Tanzania, but it's um, you know because sometimes you don't know about other countries until you know certain things happen and you start doing research. Just yeah. like you know, right now, me and some of my uh, brothers we're working on this rebuilding Sierra Leone and Liberia, and we're looking to come there strong with good energy, and um, you know because it was our original homeland set settlement and. You know, many mm. things happen over the period of time, but at the same time, too, uh, we're in a building stage, and and you know, and all. So you're, you're building in Sierra Leone. No, I'm not building in Sierra Leone. We're all working okay. together to build up the country. Uh, oh, okay. For more, for more tourism, for more investments, uh, land, you know, people okay. get land and things like that. And it's 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 basically Sierra Leone and Liberia. It's just, you know, it's just we're doing Liberia in our schedule, and a few of my other brothers they're doing Sierra Leone. But we're all coming together and we're working together. It's just that's just how the, the flow of it ended up working out. Okay. And then if you have a Sierra Leone citizenship, they're gonna be able to get your a Sierra Leone passport. Um, nice. We're gonna work certain things out in Liberia, so we're just yeah. still working on that. But uh, we just, you know, as you see, as I was saying, that we're just putting our energy together so we can have strong representation on the African continent, so where no one country can deny us or treat us in any kind of way. Right. So we, we're trying to. Explain to people about Ghana. Let, let them do what they want to do, um, and you know eventually they're gonna stop doing what, stop the foolishness, and mm -hmm. then you know, and then by the time they turn around now, they have hardcore competition, mm -hmm. because some yes. countries just feel like they just got it like that. And South Africa and Ghana is one of those two countries, two of the most popular countries in Africa, and with so much going on, yeah, and mm -hmm. you know, and then. You know, they're losing business now. Now South Africa is humbling themselves. Now they tell you can come there and there's no requirements. <laughs> <Is that> something? <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. I'm looking for some business. Yeah, I'm looking for some business opportunities. And um, maybe I could talk with you about that later. You oh, know? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, because I'm trying to build so that I can be able to go back and forth. Because right now I, I'm not able to, but I have been trying to make connections. And um, some of them have not been very well, <laughs> didn't go very well. Yeah, absolutely. That's what people myself. Thanks. Yeah, go ahead. That's why people like myself, they're here to this, like connect us properly because it's not, it's, it's not the simplest thing. And you just have to just really just have those elements uh, and mm -hmm. connections in place. Uh, yeah. So I'm telling people like yourself, this, you know, when it, whatever we are looking to do, you know, we're here to, it's a bunch of us, we're here to represent the African diaspora and make sure our people are taken care of mm -hmm. uh, and things like that. Because, you know, because we know how it works in the different countries, you know, they'll see you coming and you, you and you're another one of your friends come at the airport and they start licking their chops. <laughs> yeah, I, I was asked to pay school fees and all sorts of stuff. I, and I said, you know what, let me just give you a brief of one of my experiences. Um, the young lady, she, um, I don't know, we met. And anyway, we talked for quite a bit of time and she was having problems. And so... You know, I asked if she ever been in business for herself there. She said, yes, yeah, she would sell food um, and different things. And she even sent me pictures of her doing those things. But anyway, I wind up investing in a small, you know, merchandise to help her, you know, because she was in need. And so I said, well, let's, let me do this. And um I don't know, the next thing I knew she needed school fees, you know, and it was about the, the children not being able to get to school or go to school or continue school unless they were paid, you know, so I helped her again and I had to cut myself off because I said, if it doesn't work out, then it's on her, you know, and I explained to her, I do this for you. And I believed her. I believed that her story was true. You know, and um, like everybody else around the world is struggling. But, um, you know, initially I was looking for land to do some agricultural work. And I think that's how I kind of connected with her. But, um, yeah, so. Well, hopefully she'll show you proof that she was doing the right thing. Um, well, I didn't care at that point. <laughs> I figured... You know, I did my part All right. and I just felt like, you know, it's on you now, you know, if, if somebody gives you an opportunity and it's not one that comes often, you should take advantage of it, do your best, you know, so not that I don't care, care about a person, but I cared enough to try to assist her, you know. Yeah, it's also, I don't, I don't mean it harshly, but I wasn't going to allow myself to keep getting strung along, you know. Yeah, there's only so much you can do, um, and you know, and things like that. So, you know, like I'm always some people when we get there, we just do our best we can do, and you know, we try to just you know do the best. But it's like at the same time too, you know, mm -hmm. you know they have rich people in countries like Ghana. Like when you drive around Ghana, you just see a bunch of this expensive, this uh, communities, and we stay in we stay in a popular area called East of Ghana. And, once we leave and go drive around, I tell people, like, you know, this is how you know, some of the people are living very well and everything. And then we take them to another community. So, you know, mm -hmm. uh, but the thing of it is we're trying to encourage other people in Ghana to invest back in their own people. Yeah. And instead of just you just being rich and then you just have yeah, home, working for yeah. you as a slave, because sometimes, you know, I see people who are working for rich people and the way they get treated, it breaks my it's heart. Horrible. Um, and so... You know, we we know we as a people just have to do better. So we just try to just yeah. you know, push to this, let our people know like, hey, this you know, if yeah. we don't do what we need to do, we're gonna be colonized by other people like the Chinese or the Indians are. And then people yeah. tell me that white people are dying out. I was like, regardless that they die out, all you're gonna be doing is replacing yourself with a new master. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> it's so true. Yeah. It's so true. So, you know, yeah. let's do this together. But family, what I do have to do, I do have to close this call because we have gone on for a while and everything. And anyone want to talk to me directly, you know, I'm available throughout the day. You could text me and we can talk. And even anyone want to continue on talking directly about anything specific tonight, 
I'm available while I'm working on a few things. So family, appreciate everyone. Um, connection and energy and uh, I'll keep everybody posted in all of the groups that we're in. I'll keep on sending updates and, and everything and, and I'll just uh, connect with everybody uh, next time. Okay. So, well, take care and good thank night. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Nice meeting you. <laughs> you Bye too. everybody. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Good night. Good night. <laughs>